Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sheila Sear. I will be your moderator. So before we officially start our webinar, I would like to draw your attention to the reminders flash on the screen. So let's go over each item quickly. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sheila Sear. I will so for attendees, uh, your microphone is muted upon entry, so don't panic. Um, it's the default setting, but uh, in case you have any question or if, in case you have any comment during the open forum, the host will unmute your microphone. Secondly, um, how to ask a question during the open forum. So just use the chat box located at the lower part of the screen. You just need to uh, click the chat icon, type your name and your uh, affiliation and your question. And Please send it to all participants. I repeat to all participants and not to a specific person. And you may do this while the presentation is in progress or during the open forum. And I will call you uh, during the open forum in case you have any question. And also for our Facebook viewers, you are also very much welcome to join our uh, discussion and you may send your you may send your question using the comment section. So with that, uh, please settle down and we will start our webinar in uh, four minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Thursday, June 18, and welcome to another edition of the PIDS webinar series 
where we tackle development issues based on data and evidence. I'm Sheila Thiar, and I will be moderating this event. The coronavirus pandemic has created a health emergency with dire socioeconomic consequences, especially for the poor and the vulnerable. Strengthening social protection is essential to mitigate the adverse impacts of this crisis. It is for this reason that we have chosen social protection as the topic of our webinar for this week. So join us as we look at the coverage of our social protection programs, particularly of social insurance. But more than that, we will examine if there is any gender gap in the coverage, to what extent, and what we can do about it. To formally open our event and share her insights about the topic, we have the president of the PIDS, Dr. Celia Reyes. Mamsel? Thank you, Sheila. Um, to all our colleagues from the government, friends from the academe, civil society, and the private sector, good afternoon and welcome to the PIDS weekly webinar series that's organized by Director Sheila Siar and her team. Uh, we would like to acknowledge the presence of um, Undersecretary Paterna Ruiz from the National Anti-Poverty Commission, um, Executive Director Cha Lobrin Satumba from the Department of Labor and Employment Institute for Labor Studies. Um, we'd also like to welcome Director of National Council on Disability Affairs, Mateo Lee Jr. Um, also the Vice President from Social Security System, Ms. Eleonora Cinco and our friends from the academe, uh, in particular, Executive Director of the Women and Gender in Institute of Miriam College, Dr. Dr. Tessa De Vela, and um, the Dean of the College of Social Work and Community Development of the University of the Philippines, Dr. Silvia Claudio, and friends from CSO, um, President of Ahon Samahira, Ms. Mercedes Abad, and um, a good friend, Ms. Marivik Rakisa, co-convener of Social Watch. Philippines, and I think her first time to attend the PIDS webinar, uh, the Deputy Head of Mission of the Mexican Embassy in the Philippines, Ms. Daniela Hill Sevilla. So welcome um, to all our colleagues and um, friends. The Philippines has made a lot of progress in terms of addressing gender disparity. In fact, in the World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Report 2020, released last December 2019, the Philippines remained the top country in Asia in terms of closing the gender gap. Globally, we ranked 16th out of 153 countries, which can still be considered as an achievement despite a drop of eight notches from the list last year. The report ranked the Philippines 14th in terms of economic participation and opportunity, 37th in education attainment, 41st in health and survival, and 29th in political empowerment. While these figures paint a good picture of the state of gender equality in the country, the, the realities on the ground suggest that there are areas for improvement. In the Institute's first gender book launched last March, it was revealed that women in the Philippines still have a lower labor force participation rate, and they are more likely to be in the informal sector compared to men. This is consistent with the results of the PIDS study that will be presented this afternoon. As of 2017, there are 15 million female workers engaged in formal employment, while 39 million women are engaged in informal employment in the country. This has implications on the country's social protection coverage because those who are in the informal sector tend to have less access to such programs, hence will receive limited benefits. Consequently, this lack of access to social protection programs makes Filipinos more vulnerable to the effects of natural disasters as well as other problems such as economic shocks, um, health crises, and unemployment. This afternoon's topic hopes to shed more light on the extent of gender disparities in the social protection coverage. Dr. Aubrey Tabuga and Carlos Caballero, research fellow and research analyst respectively, have come up with a study that examined Filipinos' access to certain social protection programs. It analyzed the gender disparities um, of current social protection programs uh, in the country, such as the government service insurance system for government workers, the social security system for private sector workers, and PhilHealth. 
the study found that there are workers who still do not have access to the social protection programs. Based on 2017 data, 69% or about 8.3 million women workers are not yet members of any of the social protection programs. This is quite alarming considering that we are in the midst of a pandemic. More than ever, this period calls for a strong collaboration among all sectors to ensure that everyone is covered by these programs, regardless of age, gender, or economic status. Dr. Tabuga will also give us a closer look on the characteristics of workers who have access to social protection programs from type of employment, income class, and sector. But more importantly, she will discuss the circumstances of those who do not have access, of which, according to the study, many belong to the bottom 30% of households in the country. Furthermore, the study also examines the factors associated with access to social insurance. And finally, Dr. Tabuga will also provide policy recommendations to improve the coverage of social protection programs in the country. So I hope that you will stay with us until the end of the webinar. Once again, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon, and I look forward to hearing your insights during the open forum. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you very much, Mamsel. Uh, before we proceed with the presentation of our speaker, let me re reiterate that we would like to encourage all of you to participate in the discussion, which we will have immediately after the presentation. So allow me to uh, uh, repeat our guidelines for the open, open forum. So while the presentation or the open forum is ongoing, if you have any question or comment, just use the chat box, which is located at the uh, lower part of your screen. And as I don't know all of you, could you please type your name and your uh, affiliation and your question if you can, and I will call you during the open forum and make sure that you are uh, sending your message to all participants. I repeat, all participants do not send it to a specific person. And uh, for all attendees, uh, you may have noticed that your uh, microphone is muted. So don't worry because we will unmute it during the open forum in case you have a question. And for our uh, viewers on Facebook, if you have um, any question, feel free to use the um, uh, comment section. So just type your question. I will read them during, I will read your question during the open forum. So I think we are all ready to listen to the presentation. So allow me to introduce the authors of the study. The main author and our presenter this afternoon is Dr. Aubrey Tabuga, who is a senior research fellow at PIDS. In her uh, two decade uh, stint at the uh, PIDS, she worked on various research topics, including international migration and remittances, poverty, disability, gender, health and nutrition, policy analysis and social networks. Obri obtained her PhD in public policy from the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy at the National University of Singapore. She uh, finished her master's degree in public policy at the National Graduate Institute for Public for Policy Studies or GRIPS in Tokyo, Japan and obtained her bachelor's degree in economics from the University of the Philippines at Los Baños. Obri is a co-organizer of the newly formed Philippine uh, Public Policy Network, or PPPN, under the Umbrella Network, Asia-Pacific Public Policy Network. Her co-author is Mr. Carlos Caballero, uh, who is a research analyst at PIDS. Carlos graduated with a BS economics degree uh, from the UP uh, School of Economics, and Carlos is currently taking, taking up a statistics, master's in, in statistics, also at UP Diliman. So here now is Dr. Aubrey Tabuga for her presentation. Um, thank you, um, Sheila, for that wonderful uh, introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to share uh, with you our study on the gender disparities in social protection coverage, particularly social, social insurance. So the objectives of our study are to identify, next slide, please identify gaps in the coverage of social insurance programs, namely social security system, government service insurance system, and the national health insurance or field health. We also wanted to examine the characteristics and circumstances of men and women without access to social protection who also belong to the poorest 30% of the household. So we are focusing on the situation of people who are highly vulnerable uh, to risks. 
We also wanted to examine factors associated with um, access to social insurance in a more formal way um, in our regression analysis. And all these uh, are meant to provide or, or for purposes of, of getting insights um, for program and policy design in improving social protection coverage. Next, please. Okay, so what, just to mention the rationale for the study, people are exposed to different risks, unemployment, um, other income shocks, illnesses, disability, and recently the COVID-19 pandemic. And the Philippines is also highly vulnerable to natural calamities and climate change and weather variability. Some, of, um, some are more capable of managing these risks, getting themselves protected, others are, are less capable. But many are highly vulnerable, particularly the poor. Hence, there is a need to examine coverage of social protection programs. And our focus in this report are gender disparities in the, the coverage of these uh, programs. Please note that we also um, limited our analysis to social insurance coverage um, on membership in the insurance schemes that we that we have that I have mentioned a while ago. So why gender disparities? Um, previous work noted the disadvantaged position of women relative to men. Many of them are not in the labor force, as mentioned a while ago by our president. And because of this, many are not formally employed, which is the usual and relatively more sustainable channel uh, for obtaining social insurance and other benefits. And um, we know from literature that helping women is associated with holistic development when women are empowered, when they are provided benefits, um, when, they're, when they're protected, they're more likely to invest in proper nutrition, education, and healthcare for their children. Meanwhile, men, particularly in the Philippines uh, social context, are traditionally the breadwinners um, and heads of the family. Because social norms dictate that women do most of the care work um, at home, the family relies heavily uh, on the male head to provide for the family. It is therefore very important to understand both their circumstances and develop insights for improving um, their situation as far as social insurance is concerned. Next, please. Next slide, please. So um, this is basically a descriptive analysis with some correlational analysis, as I've mentioned a while ago. And circumstances of men and women using the merged data of the labor force survey and the annual poverty indicator survey. And we segregated the analysis into employed persons and, the, and those not in the labor force, including youth um, not in employment and education. And as I've mentioned earlier, we, we conducted more formal uh, regression analysis for, for the correlates of social insurance membership. Please. Okay, so I am a graph here titled composition of non-members. Non-members meaning that they don't have SSS or GSI, GSIS and PhilHealth, whether, whether it's a paying scheme or the, the sponsored scheme. So I'm showing the, the composition of non-members by employment status, um, the employed, unemployed, and not in the labor force. I would just like to describe um, the graphs more um, for the benefit of our audience who may have um, visual uh, impairment. So what is shown in this graph um, are the compositions of persons who do not have the, the membership. And I'm, I'm illustrating through this graph that we need to examine more deeply the employed persons and those not in the labor force because these two comprise the bulk of non-members. So male workers, we estimated that there is at least 10.6 million employed men who are non-members. When I say non-members, they do not have both um, schemes. They're not members of, of both schemes. So apart from the 10.6 million male workers, there are 1.1 million men who are not in the labor force and some 800,000 who are unemployed. For the women, we estimated that there were at least, um, and this is for 2017 data, or 2017 estimates, there were um, 6.4 million employed and another 6.7 million not in the labor force and around half a million unemployed who were non-members. 
So you can see the two big groups um, are employed and they're not in the labor force because um, the unemployed takes a, a small proportion. In total, there were at least 26 million persons aged 15 to 59 who are non-members. And this represents 56% of the population of interest. Note that this figure does not include the segment of, in of economically inactive persons who were currently in school. So we, we did not include those. So the graph shows that 65% of all non-members are employed, were employed, while 30% were not in the labor force. In terms of composition by sex, majority or 52% of the non-members were women. Note that for men, the bulk of non-members were employed, while that for women comprised of employed and those not in the labor force. Next, please. We now move to the analysis of the employed person's um, circumstances. Next, please. Next slide. Okay, so we are showing you in this graph the composition of workers by class, regardless of their membership or, or access to social insurance, so that we have first an, an understanding of the general composition of workers. It's important to have, that, have this in mind as we go to the other results later on. So the way to read this graph is that among employed women, you can see the, the, the bar on the, on the top um, part of the graph, 43.6 or 44% or of them work in private establishments. In contrast, 63% of male workers work in the private establishments. Next, please. Next slide, please. Can, can we show the next slide? Thank you. Okay, so this next graph shows the composition of employed who are non-members. Sorry, I'm not seeing, um, yeah, okay, thank you. So the way to read this, this graph is that among employed women who are non-members, one third worked in the private establishments, another one third were self-employed and nearly 15% were unpaid family workers and around 12% were household workers. So this is composition. You take all the, the female uh, non-members who are employed and you take the, the percentage of each class of worker. So we can see here that there is disproportionately higher percentage of women, non-members who are self-employed. Remember that on the overall, only 24% women were self-employed. This, this is also the case for unpaid family workers and household workers. Among men who are non-members, on the other hand, 58.3% were in the private, uh, were workers in private establishments and some 23% were self-employed during that time and 6.9 or 7% were unpaid family workers. Again, there are more self-employed men who are non-members than we expected given the composition of male workers in general. So this information enables us to form questions in our minds um, on what is going on with the self-employed. At the same time, it gives us the, class, the classes of workers that require greater focus, and these are private establishment workers and self-employed uh, um, persons for both men and women, and also the categories of unpaid workers, household workers. Next, please. Next graph, uh, next slide, please. The way to read this uh, next graph is that Thank you. Okay. So this graph um, we put here employed non-members in bottom 30%. So in this graph, we would like to show you that um, among um, the employed non-members who are living um, or in households that are part of bottom 30%, um, what is the percentage of those workers in private households that, that, that belong in this category? For instance, um, 
the blue or the purple bars here um, pertain to male workers and then the blue bars pertain to female workers. So among male private household workers, 37% are not members and belonging to the bottom 30%. This is 43% for women and, and so on. And we can see that save for household workers, there are relatively more men than women who are in this difficult situation of being non-member and at the same time part of the poorest 30% uh, of, of households in the country. If we look at the biggest groups, private establishment workers and then the self-employed, men are worse off than women. This is also true for the other categories except among government workers where there is relatively um, the same proportion who are in this condition. Next, please. We now look at the circumstances of workers in greater details. Next slide, please. Okay, so this graph showed the proportion of men and women workers in private establishments who fall under these categories, a permanent job, a short term, paid on daily basis, and so on. So we can see um, the, the pairs of bars, they're actually separated from each other because uh, we cannot we should not add these not these do not add up into like 100% or, or or something like that we just wanted to show the difference between men and women in these categories but um let me point out that um the workers in this uh, class of work um and are facing this uh, difficult situation eight out of 10 of them are in fact men as for the characteristics both groups, that is men and women, reported that many of them, nearly 70, uh, yeah, okay, thank you, nearly 70% are paid on a daily basis. Half noted their jobs are permanent, though. Slightly more women than men are on short term job arrangements. There are two times more men than women who want more hours of work. And it is not worthy that more men have other jobs and that they are getting paid more than women. Next please, for the self-employed, we learned that men were usually in the agricultural sector while the women are in small retail businesses um, like the Sari Sari stores and personal uh, services like um, the, the manicurists, um, um, those working in salons and the spa. Again, we can see here that more men have um, other occupation trying to augment their livelihood and this intention is also evident as more men want more hours, hours of work. And although we cannot um, make uh, the comparison in this graph, um, self-employed women wanted more uh, work, wanted more hours of work than other categories of female workers, um, which suggests that they want to augment their earnings. Next, please. About unpaid uh, workers, okay. 80 to 88 percent of them are engaged in agricultural activities with um, the overwhelming proportion um, with overwhelming proportion of them working as crop farm laborers in fact 75 percent of men unpaid family workers and 69 percent of women unpaid family workers who are without social insurance membership and living in poorer households are crop farm laborers for men, half of their um, household income on the average come from agriculture, which indicates the seasonality of their farming activities because they, they get some income from non-agricultural activities. And um, perhaps they, they also work as laborers in construction and other elementary occupations of season. Interestingly, nine out of 10 male unpaid workers are single and young. In fact, the average age is 23 and only 27% of women are, are single and they're way older also but, uh, with an average um, age of five. Next, please. So this graph shows the government workers. So among government workers, when I say government workers, I don't um, just limit it to all the, the regular uh, government workers. It's actually workers for the government. This include the voluntary health workers, um, the janitors, the, the street sweepers. So there are slightly more women who reported that they hold permanent jobs, but despite these, the bulk are paid with commission. As you can see on the left um, left bars there, the commission-based um, workers. 
So 40% of male government workers uh, in the category that we've mentioned, those who are non-members and in, in poorest uh, families. So 40% of them are paid um, commissions. And there are relatively more women in that uh, part, in that category, 59% of women are paid um, commissions rather than um, on a monthly basis. We also found that a non-negligible non percentage are um, with other jobs. So even among government workers, the issue seems to be the nature of the employment as well as inadequate earnings, as suggested by their, their profiles. Next, please. So government workers, the male government workers um, who worked, um, who are not covered by, by GSIS and other, and SSS and field health, they comprise of cleaners, security personnel and protective, uh, those that are conducting protective services, garbage collectors, um, sweepers, um, building caretakers, and even um, legislate the, uh, the kagawads um, in the local governments. Women in this category comprise of community health workers, healthcare assistants, social work assistants, street sweepers, cleaners, um, clerical workers in the barangays, the daycare workers, the primary, um, secondary school teachers, and teacher aides. So when I'm, I'm, I'm saying this um, kinds of workers, we just zoom in into those uh, workers, uh, government workers who are non-members and um, are part of the poorest families. And we found this these kinds of, of occupations that they're doing. We now move to the private household workers. Okay, so this graph shows the situation of private household workers. So nearly nine out of 10 workers under this category are women. And there is not much uh, difference in the characteristics between men and women, only that most women in, in this group are married. Um, you'll, you'll find that only 27% are, are single. In contrast, majority of men in this group are single, 59% um, of them. Although the percentages are small, we can see that having different employers um, is more likely among women than men. You can see here um, the, the percentage of workers with different employers, 4% for, for men and 11% for women. Again, although I have to say that their work um, is considered permanent um, for the, the definition of the labor force survey, majority um, of men and 41% of women um, although this, this part here are not shown in this graph, they reported that they are paid on a daily basis. Okay, next, please. Okay, so as I've mentioned earlier, we also did some correlational analysis between social insurance membership and various socioeconomic factors, again, using um, the, the pooled um, 2016 and 2017 annual poverty indicator survey with their LFS uh, variables. Note that um, in our dependent variable in the lo logit regression that we did um, is whether or not one is a member in, in SSS or GSIS and field health, but only the paying scheme, we did not include the sponsored scheme here because what we wanted to capture is more about people's ability to pay um, for their contribution. So we found the following um, results, findings. Women are less likely to be covered by social insurance than men, controlling for, for other factors like human capital, economic condition, sector of work, um, even importance of remittances in the families and agricultural income share. And you also found that education is a key factor in having social insurance with likelihood increasing by the number of years a person is educated. Formal employment, um, which we um, very arbitrarily defined as working in the private establishment or the government also greatly increases the likelihood of having social insurance. We also found that the level of income positively correlates um, with being enrolled in both uh, social insurance programs as expected. And we found something interesting that warrants um, further analysis, and that is the likelihood um, that the household member is enrolled in social insurance program inversely correlates with the share of overseas remittances the household receives as a share of total income. So for our providers, we need to encourage more of these households to become members. And um, I think um, 
this has been found in other studies wherein remittances act as as an insurance and so maybe this um, this finding is showing that so those who are more reliant or who rely more on insure on, on remittances in their total income they are less likely to be enrolled in our social insurance programs that's what uh, our study um, is pointing out moving on to the other correlates next please okay so Households that have higher share of, agri of agricultural income to total income are also less likely to be covered by social insurance programs. And, and this fi finding contributes to the notion that most agricultural households in the country are um, informally employed and or have um, limited means for availing um, social insurance. So in the model we, we created, uh, because um, agriculture is so important, um, we created an interaction term for being a woman and the share of agricultural income to total income, because we simply want to know whether women in agriculture have statistically lower probability of being covered by these insurance schemes. And we found that women in households that rely more on agriculture do not have statistically different likelihood um, of accessing social insurance um, from others, as shown by the insignificant coefficient in the interaction term. And this is probably because um, women in general including those who work in informal businesses, in, in private households, tend to be left out. So not just women in the agricultural sector. Furthermore, it is not only the women in the agricultural sector who are less likely to, to access social insurance, but, but also the men, which is shown in our um, descriptive analysis, particularly among um, unpaid workers in family operated farms, and businesses, and self-employed farmers. Next, please. Now we go to the analysis of characteristics uh, of people not in the labor force. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so this graph um, shows the, la the labor force participation rate of men and women through the years. And you, you may have seen this many times, but this is a very important graph. You see, majority of women aged 15 to 59 are not in the labor force. And there's a very wide gap between male and female labor force uh, participation, nearly, nearly 30 percentage points. In, in 2018, um, the LFPR among women was 46.7. Um, this is based on, on data from the, the PSA, basic data from the PSA. Um, and that of men is 75.3. To compare this with our neighbors, uh, neighboring countries, the female the female LFPR um, in 2018 for Singapore is 61%. Um, in Vietnam, it's 72.7, that's for 2019. And Indonesia, although it has lower um, LFPR um, compared to these countries I've mentioned, they still have a bit higher um, than ours at 53%. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so using the data in our study, we tried to profile men and women who are not in the labor force with respect to their individual and household characteristics. And we found that majority of men um, are single or were single, while majority of women not in the labor force were married, but these women um, have worked at any time prior um, to their situation which um, reflects, again, the circumstances of women being home-based, doing household work, care work, and traditional roles. We also found that women were living in families that have relatively um, lower per capita income than their male counterpart. So these women not in the labor force, many of them um, were in a difficult situation. Um, these, they are not dependents of, of, well, of families um, doing nothing. Many of them had prior work experience, as I've mentioned, and, and I argue that uh, they may have been stalled um, by their traditional roles um, in the family, and many of them are, are highly vulnerable to risks and shocks, uh, indeed. Next, please. In this graph, um, I'd like to show you um, the youth not in employment and education. It should be NEET, N-E-E-T, uh, not in employment, um, education, or training, but we don't have um, a data or a variable for training in the 
the data that we are, are using. So the knee youth, um, they, are, they are neither working nor in school. So we define here youth as those aged 15 to 24. And it is very important that we look at this in our effort to, to more broadly understand access to social protection because there may be a historical aspect in terms of the lives of, of individuals that we can learn from that will help us understand more about their economic inactiveness. So for many women, being inactive starts early. You can see from this graph, the rate of being knee among girls is nearly twice that of boys. It's, it's mirroring the, the LFPR. So in 2017, 28.5% of girls in our, category, in our category, while only 15.2% of boys are considered knee or not in employment um, or education and education. So they're neither in school, they're, they're not working. Now, um, later I have a hypothesis about this low NEE, NEE rate among boys. A low rate is ideal, but we need to know what kinds of work these young men are probably doing and how um, this is connected to their access to social insurance. Next, please. Next, okay. So, so the knee rate has two elements in it, um, not in school and not in employment. The not in, in employment part is largely being not in the labor force rather than um, unemployment. For the schooling part, we examined reasons for not attending school to better understand what is happening to boys um, and girls. And the most common reason, and this, by the way, um, came from uh, the study of David um, Albert and Bismanis 2018, wherein they show that the most common reason for girls um, for being um, not in school, with 38 of them identifying such reason is related to marriage or family matters, which reflects um, that early marriage and girls' traditional role in the family limit their ability to develop their skills and talents, and consequently their employability. Marriage um, and fa or family matters is also a reason for 15% of boys, but this is uh, this percentage is not even half that for girls. And um, while employment is also one key reason for girls, 20% um, of them reported this reason. This is the most common reason for boys, where 33% of them um, um, reported that um, they were, it's because of employment that they're not attending school. And um, this reflects uh, boys' engagement in the labor force um, early um, in, their, in their life stage. It, is, it also suggests their inability to continue in, in higher education. And note that a significant proportion of boys, 34%, um, signified lack of interest, which may be due to, to peer influence and relatively poor academic performance, and also because of financial issues um, per uh, the study of David et al. Next, please. We also examined school participation among children. And here we look at the case of four peace families because these are highly uh, vulnerable um, group, groups. So the, the condition of four piece is that families send their children to school, but our data shows uh, that not all children in four piece um, families attend school. And this is perhaps because the four piece provide cash grants only to a maximum of three children, um, age zero to 18. And it is noteworthy that older children are more likely um, to skip school. Among girls, the school, the school participation rate is almost 100% um, for the younger cohort. Um, but this rate starts to go down among teenagers um, age 16, um, wherein 91% na nang yung attend. And then this further decreases to, to 75% uh, among the, the, those age 17, and then further down uh, for those um, age 18. Among boys, though, the decrease in school participation rate starts um, earlier at around 13 years old, uh, with only 94% uh, of them going to school. At 16, this is lowered um, to 91, then to 80%. Uh, at 17, and then among 18-year-old boys, um, only 66% of them uh, attend school. So it, it is likewise uh, important to know what are their, um, what are the reasons of for these children in not attending schools, and and um, the most or the most prevalent reason or the, the most common reason 
um, is a high cost of education, where some of them uh, seek employment and perhaps to augment their, their income, which reflects the financial concern in, in higher education. So such data on the school participation of four piece families um, for four piece family children suggests that four piece as a program um, is not able to motivate um, beneficiary families uh, to send all their children to school. And this inability of older children, especially those in, in the poorest families um, to attend school, has adverse implication on their employability and consequently on their access um, to social insurance. I'd, I'd like now to summarize next, please, um, the insights from all this data that we have provided. So women not in the labor force face multiple barriers in exercising their right to employment and in turn their access to social insurance. Most of them are married, which means they have a family to care for, slightly less educated than men in this category, and many live with less educated household heads and in households with lower uh, per capita income. Majority also have a previous uh, work experience. Um, they worked in farming and other agricultural activities. Uh, some were domestic helpers and sales lady or sales clerk in, in their previous um, occupation. Yet they are un unable to continue doing gainful work uh, due to their traditional role in the family. Economic inactiveness starts early for women. The NEE rate among girls is nearly twice that of boys. Uh, in the meantime, or meanwhile, employment and engagement in unpaid family um, or unpaid farm work, on the other hand, seems too early for boys. Next, please. So what is the story um, for girls? Girls drop out because of family matters, or many girls drop out, not all girls, many girls drop out because of family matters like early marriages or engagement in, in home care work, resulting to their inability to participate in income um, earning activities that can allow them to afford social insurance. Though many girls um, tend to stay longer in school, we also found um, that many of them stay longer in school. Their traditional roles in the family tend to prevent them from engaging more actively in the economy after, even after they finish school. So for the boys, um, boys tend to drop out uh, of school earlier than girls. Um, many of these seek employment. Um, they land most probably in elementary um, occupations or short-term contracts that pay on a daily basis. Um, because they're unable to continue their studies, they get stuck in these kinds of jobs as they grow up. Although formally employed in private establishments, many male workers are without social insurance memberships. Others become unpaid workers in their own family farms or businesses. Um, and these young workers are shown to have one of the highest percentages of non-members in, in, so, in social insurance. So what is the bottom line for women um, workers? Um, employed women's lack of access to social insurance appears to be associated with their lack of capacity to pay for premiums, which is likely the case um, for the self-employed and paid uh, workers in family enterprises and the household workers. And self-employed workers, uh, particularly those in small retail businesses and in personal services, have irregular income streams and are not able to pay off the premium on a regular basis. This problem is also evident and more evident, I think, in case of unpaid family workers. Note that many women, um, as well as men, in this category engage mostly in agriculture, which is um, less productive compared to the other sectors. And although majority of household workers reported that their jobs are permanent, a significant proportion of these are considered short term and they are in paid, they are paid on a daily basis. Moving on, okay, so it is quite challenging to access social insurance with short-term jobs or contracts or when the workers are paid um, on a daily basis. So even if the employer co-pays the premium, for instance, there is also the issue of, of changing employers, having different employers at the same time. Ensuring these types or, or, or if not different employers, um, there is a fast turnover, which is uh, the case of, of household workers. Also ensuring these types of workers have access to social insurance perhaps requires um, a different strategy than the employer-employee mandatory contributory system because of the nature of short-term jobs and the fast turnover in, in household workers, for instance. It is noteworthy that despite uh, their lack of, of secure income, women had comparatively lower underemployment rate. And it is um, 
it, this is understandable and it is likely uh, due to their, you know, their balancing their time between work and home responsibilities. Um, that is why most of them do not uh, desire additional work. There is also a need to ensure that all employed uh, workers are provided access to social insurance as 48% of women working in private sectors, private establishments, and 44% of government uh, female workers still do not have social insurance. For those working for the government, such as volunteer um, health workers, the short-term and at times coterminous nature um, of their work with the, with the local political landscape may hinder their ability to, to access social protection on, on a regular basis. What is the bottom line for women or for men or what can you say about their um, about their situation? So past studies show that relatively men are in a better position in terms of access to social insurance because many of them are employed uh, and many women are not. But are they really in a better position? I'd like to say that they have a different but equally difficult um, situation. They may have crossed that important line into employment, um, the formal kind for many, but many of those who worked in, in private establishments are non-members and their lack of access to, to, to social insurance seems to be largely, largely attributed to their being daily wage and commission earners. Most say that they hold um, permanent jobs. So they are in permanent um, and others in short-term jobs that do not have security of tenure. But not only that, that is just part of the whole uh, scenario. They also have very low basic pay. Men who are in the private establishments belonging to the bottom 30% without social um, insurance membership received on the average um, in 2016, like 260 pesos per day. And very few of them have other income sources. Uh, only 8% have other jobs because they were already working or spending 42 hours a week in their primary occupation. So apart from the nature of employment, it's also about the amount of income that they get from their uh, employment. It is important to investigate um, any barriers in private sector workers of membership in social insurance. Um, any violation of relevant policies concerning social insurance uh, must be investigated. With their likely uh, meager income, self-employed farmers and farm workers are unlikely to prioritize um, membership in social insurance. The high underemployment rate among such um, male workers signifies their need for higher level of income. So on the overall, it appears that um, being employed is not enough. Employment does not guarantee um, access to social insurance for most uh, of the workers in this study. It um, gainful and income must be secure. In addition, um, this uh, predicament um, seems to start early with boys dropping out of school um, to either seek employment or, or support their family farm or businesses as unpaid family worker, probably, of course, because of the, the economic issues um, in their family. Many of these unpaid male workers are young, single, farm laborers and because farm work is seasonal and earnings are not guaranteed they are in a very vulnerable uh, situation remember a while ago that male youth have a much lower rate of knee uh, those not in employment and education than girls i argue that although that is the case they are employed in rather elementary occupations and because their their level of education is relatively low remember they they drop out early their options are limited and they are unable to obtain high paying jobs or more, more decent um, paying jobs. So during a, a, a off farm season, they may take uh, work in construction as laborers. So these are the kinds of workers that are in need of social protection. So to summarize the key issues, next slide please. Um, for social insurance coverage um, expansion, Lack of income security um, is one of the key um, issues due to the due to the unstable and casual nature of many jobs in private establishments, private households, small um, small businesses, and in agriculture. With unstable income sources, people are not uh, encouraged to enroll and sustain their membership. They may enroll, but they may not be able to to sustain their their um, contributions or they pay their contributions. So. It's a cycle, a lack of income security resulting to inability to access social insurance, 
um, which is important in times of risk, and that in turn leads to greater uh, vulnerability. And the main issue for unpaid family workers, um, and of course, the self-employed, um, it should be inserted here in this um, slide, is that many of them work in agriculture, which is currently less productive compared to other workers, as I've mentioned um, a while ago. This is an evidence that improving agricultural productivity and not only agricultural productivity and also farm opportunities in the rural areas are likely to contribute to the improvement of both women and men's ability to access um, social insurance. There, next please, there may also be lack of enforcement or implementation of the law in providing access to social insurance for workers in private establishments and private households. And for these further studies must be done to examine the barriers in these categories. There may also be lack of awareness and low level of perception about the benefits of social insurance that we need to address. Um, it is also possible that there are administrative hurdles um, in enrollment and payment or, or collection of, of contributions. And the higher rate of economic inactiveness or being not in the labor force is largely a gender issue on which emanates from traditional roles of women in the home. The high rate of uh, NEE, NEE among women and early marriages and uh, perhaps teenage pregnancies are also areas for concern for social insurance um, coverage uh, expansion. The early dropout of older boys from school to seek for work um, or become unpaid workers in farms is, is an economic issue also that warrants appropriate uh, solutions. Next, please. So for our recommendations, expanding membership in social insurance is vital, particularly for the most vulnerable groups. The, the above mentioned factors such as short term nature of jobs, coterminous work, seasonality and fast turnover among workers or among, um, among other um, factors present difficulties for targeting workers in relevant interventions. Um, but people working for the government at least are relatively more feasible to, to locate and target. And um, so these are the volunteer health workers, the staff of local government units, um, the street sweepers, our uh, janitors, our tanods, um, and the short-term contract-based workers um, in the government. And so ensuring as many government workers as possible be become and remain members of both GSIS or if not GSIS, um, even SSS and field health is a good start and is something that can be carried out, I think, in, in the short term. Enhancing the implementation or enforcement of current labor policies um, that ensure the inclusion, the inclusion of eligible private sector workers would benefit many male um, workers um, who are non-members because a large proportion of this group are workers in, in male um, in private establishments. Next, please. Okay, so interventions that seek to improve women's access to social protection must prioritize those in the agricultural sector, the self-employed, the unpaid family members and the household workers. Informal workers may be reached through non-government organizations and the social entre entrepreneurs working with them. Also relevant government agencies and local governments must partner uh, with these bodies for a more proactive promotion of social insurance uh, to these workers. NGOs, for instance, can be um, instrumental um, in facilitating access through information and education programs, referrals, and, and documentary assistance for, for women. Excuse me. For the unorganized groups, um, social protection is a good entry point for their organization. Um, such approach um, benefit comes from the fact that uh, social protection is, is crucial to these informal workers, um, the home base and the casual workers. Next, please. And um, yeah, further analysis must be carried out to understand the barriers of young women in, young women in entering the workforce. Um, for instance, reducing or efforts that reduce the incidence of teenage pregnancies is important in addressing huge gaps in the labor force participation. Also, effective interventions um, must be designed to address their educational and training needs. If an individual is not able to get um, the necessary training for work at an early age, it is likely that um, that, that person will encounter job-related problems in the future. In, in general, um, boosting the employability of, of both young men and women um, is essential to sustain efforts in enhancing access to social protection. Next, please. 
So if young girls and married women um, alike are confined in their homes because of their traditional roles, there are opportunities in home-based work or enterprises that can take on as alternative sources of income. There are many women who are now engaging in, in online businesses, um, using online platforms and social media to market their products. So while the extent of their exposure in online work and businesses uh, is yet to be examined, um, it is crucial for the government to design approaches that will entice them to, to become members of, of the SSS and field health. And the partnership between the government and online platforms can be um, forged to encourage um, more entrepreneurs into, into social insurance. Next, please. Efforts that facilitate and improve um, their access to home-based income opportunities as well as relevant um, skills must therefore be, be implemented. Notably, there are young adults, um, both men and women, who are neither in education or employment with relatively high education. So it is important. So not all the knee um, um, are, are, are without education or marami din sa kanila. So they also have, there are also those who are not in education nor employment with relatively high education. And it is very important to create an environment that encourages them to participate more actively um, in the economy. And impediments, administrative or otherwise, sorry for too many texts, but it's, it's really important that I, I really provide all these recommendations. Impediments, uh, administrative or otherwise, toward expanding membership must be carefully examined uh, and addressed. Local governments can implement more active efforts for expanding social insurance coverage by installing perhaps one-stop shops that enable residents to obtain requirements and enroll with the relevant agencies um, at the same venue. Um, in time. Other difficulties such as in terms of, of, of payment or enrollment or collection of contribution, especially by members in remote areas, must also be examined and um, um, improved on. There are also opportunities that we found um, among paid family workers and employers in their own family operated business or farms. The proportion of SSS and field health members is low but relatively higher than those um, among the unpaid workers and self-employed. And this suggests the need for improving awareness and enhancing people's perception of the benefits of membership in both schemes. It is also crucial for national and local governments uh, to conduct advocacy campaign for promoting awareness and need for social insurance and even partner with various organizations and platforms, including online venues, uh, in motivating people to be more uh, proactive with social insurance. And insurance providers, SSS and field health um, and others must also take a more active role um, in their information and education campaign, um, maybe um, take advantage of, of the platforms and social media, something like that. Because ordinary citizens must understand the importance of social um, social insurance. In the agricultural um, sector, for instance, income security can be improved if farmers are made more aware about the importance of agricultural or, or crop insurance in, in a country that is highly vulnerable to natural calamities. So I think there is a need to improve mindsets here in general um, about why um, social insurance is important. I think in these difficult times, having to face all these um, huge challenges um, that the pandemic brought us made us realize how important it is to have um, a buffer. And it is high time to change mindsets and it's a rare window of, of opportunity that uh, we all can take advantage of. Lastly, um, in, in a much broader sense, all efforts for achieving income security, um, enhancing agricultural productivity and offering income opportunities in the rural areas and facilitating innovative work schemes that are inclusive of women are all consistent with initiatives for improving access to social insurance. I think that ends my, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Al. Thank you for that uh, very comprehensive presentation. So we now proceed to our open forum where you can freely ask your uh, questions or give comments on the presentation. So let me uh, start the ball rolling. Um, and and for those who are watching us, uh, for example, those who are uh, uh, officials or those who belong to Pell Health, to the SSS, or from the GSIS, uh, 
you can you can also give your insights um uh, or your your responses to the comments that uh we will receive from our participants so let me start the ball rolling oh um well obviously this pandemic has uh will worsen poverty among our uh informal workers uh many of whom many of them have no social protection so but, but however this segment of our population is not captured by official statistics um as far as i know uh let's say yung yung sss ano they have this alcansha program which is really intended for our informal workers were you and carlos able to access relevant data on how many sss members are members of our how many of uh, how many SSS members are informal workers who have availed of this Alcansha program? Okay, uh, thank you, um, Sheila, for that. First, um, whether our study captured informal workers. There's there are two there are two parts of your question: informal workers, mm -hmm. um, whether they are members of this Alcansha program. So we. Yes. Uh, the 2017 um, APIS merged with LFN. So, um, if first we cannot, it's it's very difficult to capture informal because in our statistical system, I think that part is still being um, sorted out. We don't have um, information from the LFS to help us determine whether this is an informal or formal worker because there are not. There are no information about employee employer relationship in the LFS. I think that's something that also PSA may want to work in in the future. You know, moving on, we 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 must uh, also improve uh, the way that we gather statistics or or get more details from the statistics that we get. Um, for the Alcansha uh, program, prob that's not it's not there. I, I don't. I haven't seen it from the APs. So if that program is relatively new, it's not there because we, we used the 2017 um, APs. Mm -hmm. And when we were doing this study, it was, it's, we started um, late 2018, if I'm not mistaken. And so the latest data that we have during that time uh, was the 2017 Annual Poverty Indicator Survey. And, and let me just also clarify that there may be caveats that we, we also need to provide here, although in the paper we provided that, is that we merged the LFS, which has a reference of period of the past week, and we merged the information in for, the, for the same household um, with a different, longer uh, reference period, APs, I think six month um, reference period. So it's possible that some, um, you know, you can see that the, the problems in the data maybe, uh, but I think it is very still very useful um, for that. Um, we would we look forward to that time where we're in the LFS would also cover, you know, these programs in in the same reference period that we are looking into because it should be part of the labor force survey because these are benefits mm -hmm. for workers. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, to answer that question, we, we, we were not able to cover that. Yes. We Especially will now, the pandemic, definitely. Yes. We will see definitely. what will happen. Um, I'm not sure about what's happening to the data gathering, gathering activities of PSA at these times, uh, but mm -hmm. definitely, definitely it really shocked all of us and we now find ourselves how we, we now realize um, how important it is to have really this social protection yes. schemes and social yeah. issues, even for yeah. if you can if you can get loans from SSS now that we have this, it's really yeah. very important as opposed to oh my di pala ako member so. Oh, oh, nga, oh, oh, nga. Uh, well, we welcome any comment or any response from uh, from uh, our participants from the SSS. Kung nakikinig po kayo open po kami. Uh, well, let us entertain some questions from our participants. And uh, this one is from our Facebook viewer. Her name is um, Maria Kat Valde Gumayan. Uh, Dr. Tabuga, do you have data or statistics per region of your presentation? Uh, okay, so that we have, we can have a reference, a good reference in formulating our plans related to gender and development. I assume the national data will not represent the regional data. Yes, yeah, she's just right on that. Actually, in our paper, um, we did not show here because there are quite, um, it would really blow up the presentation. But 
we did not do a regional analysis as as you already um um, my guess because it's not representative enough of to have regional data on these statistics um we even we even merged the 2016 and 2017 data just so that we can uh, improve our regression analysis because when you go to the the finer sectors of workers and you have small sample for that it would be problematic so but in the report we identified regions that um, comprise these workers. The, so the workers that we presented here, they, they're not members, they're from the bottom 30%. And you would guess, of course, that the regions that we should look into are those regions that have the highest poverty incidence, the Western Visayas, the Eastern Visayas, um, the Bicol region. So in the report, we, we have those information. Uh, perhaps we can we can share with them later on the final version of, of the, the research paper uh, series um, um, on this uh, study. Um, but yeah, it would be good to have um, enough data, enough sample to gain this, um, to get um, uh, analysis at this level, which is very important really. And now I think that's one also um, a, a deficiency in our our system. And, and, and it's really the granularity of data that we need, and we have voiced this out during our presentation of the SDGs, wherein we could not um, really know what is really happening to the different sectors because basically we are blind um, uh, on these sectors. We are we don't have the enough um, data sets um, information to to really know what is happening to the different sectors of the society and also the different regions. If we go to this finer kind of, of analysis at the regional level, we will not have enough um, samples for that, unfortunately. Thank you, Al, for that. We actually have a response from uh, from uh, Ms. Eleonora Cinco, the Vice President of of Management Services and Planning Division and concurrent Vice President of Risk Management Division of the Social Security System. She would like to uh, add info on the Alcansha, which is, uh, is the uh, program of SSS for informal workers. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, we've been trying to expand our coverage to a lot of uh, Filipinos because we really want to provide the uh, social uh, to expand the social protection to all the Filipinos, uh, eligible Filipinos. In fact, uh, we, we start, I, I cannot remember when we started Alcansha, but there are many challenges actually in uh, in implementing the Alcansha. For one is the, the payment. In, if you can see, the bar, we, we uh, promote the, the uh, boxes wherein they will put the money to collect the, the contributions eventually but it's really hard now to implement because someone has to to protect that box because every day they put money in that box so uh and then uh we also noticed that for these informal sectors you really have to provide them continuous information about social protections kasi nakakalimutan nila eh pagka ano na nangangailangan na sila mas inuuna nila yung basic needs than the social, than paying uh, SSS contributions. It's really very challenging. Pero marami na kaming uh, na, na cover. In fact, kasama dyan, pati nga yung mga those in prison na may mga, uh, ano sila, di ba? Minsan mayroon silang kita doon sa loob. Kinover din namin sila, the golfers, yung mga putulong sa, mga, sa golf. Marami na kami in next Kaya lang nga, it's, it's really a challenge for us doon sa pag-collect ng kanilang mga uh, contributions. Right now, our program is expanding for those JOs in the government. So we are uh, having a memorandum of agreement with the, with the different government agencies so that we can cover yung mga contractuals working in the government. So we are continuously uh, having programs really in expanding the coverage of the SSS. And of course, yeah, ang magiging challenge dyan, yung payment. Yung payment. Now, for those who uh, already left 
uh, employment, meron naman kami kami program for voluntary contributors. Ibig sabihin, even if they are no longer working in the private sector, they can still continue paying their contributions under the self under the voluntary program. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, Vice President Cinco, actually, meron po tayong uh, related comment uh, about the payment scheme. No? If I may just... Uh, Sige. Ano? If I may read it, sabi niya, and this is from Dorothea Boy Navarro, and she said, okay. one limiting factor that discourages people to continuously pay for social insurance is actually the payment scheme. In particular, mm -hmm. SSS in the past years, for instance, was so madamot about SSS forms. Sources simply give a copy for one payment period, and oftentimes these are not available in supposed offices. Hindi na kami nag ng forms. <laughs> Binago na namin. <laughs> We're using now the payment reference uh, number. So okay. just pa pag may pay payment reference number, you can already pay. Actually, makikuha nga yun sa website, minsan tinetext. So, yun, uh, mapiprint na mismo yung form on sa, sa website namin. Hindi na kailangan humingi. We, we change already the process of the payment of contributions. And we have already expanded also. We are now trying now to uh, to see other methods of payment para yung mga nahihirapan pa, Mayroon mga choices, different options. Thank you very much, ma'am, for that clarification. Marami pong okay. salamat. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So our next question is uh, from Mr. Dan Agustin, Executive Director of the Masaganang Sakahan. Mr. Agustin, you may use your microphone now, sir. Mr. Agustin, go ahead. Hello, Mr. Agustin. Okay, let me just read his question. Uh, do you think the blended approach of depth ed will reach the dropouts and reduce the dropout rate? Okay. How? Okay, so the question is do you think the Blended approach? Yes, the blended will, approach of them. Will be um, able to uh, reach those who drop out of school and reduce the dropout rate. Yeah, so the blended approach is this the the, the owls and the, if you can clarify um that approach that they are using, is this uh, for this this COVID nineteen pandemic uh, times? Is that uh, I, I don't know, but I assume this is in, in connection with the COVID-19 pandemic wherein they will be using various... Uh, I, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, so um, yeah, so oh. um, I wouldn't know how um, the the arrangement will be uh, if it's blended, like for instance, pwede silang pumunta sa classroom and then at, the, at times spreading online. Um, especially for, for, for public uh, school students, um, I don't think that we are already in that situation wherein all children would have access to to the internet, to the online platforms. Yun yung magiging um, problema natin. And um, paano yung yung arrangements? Kasi ang dami nila, imagine 50s or 60 per classroom. And then you would, so I think um, siguro magiging or magkakaroon ng better outcome in this kapag nagkaroon ng more how do you call it, aggressive effort from all other sectors like for instance sa, sa local government level for instance i think those who are better able like kunyari makati and the other um, cities that are doing well they may have the, the facility for the children with this but how about those in the rural areas, even the rural areas where I came from, and where not, it's very, very few. Konti lang po yung, konti, konti lang po yung, yung percentage ng bata that really have access to computers. They may have, um, they may have smartphones, some of them, but not 
I don't think how even half of the children in say elementary public elementary schools would have smartphones and even less for for the the, the laptops mm -hmm. or the, the computers so mm -hmm. yeah we are in a very difficult situation um, these problems that we are showing in terms of dropout rates they happened before the pandemic and we mm -hmm. think yes. that this will worsen with with the the, the pandemic if um if no vaccine is going to be um to be created in in the near like in the immediate future like this year or next year so ang hirap po uh, ang hirap mag, mag, mag sabi, pero from the the way i look at it it will be very difficult magkakaroon tayo ng sabi ng mga bata kasi before even before yung mga boys natin hindi na sila interested eh madami na sa kanila mm -hmm. there is this um long kumbaga matagal na nakikita sa APC yung yung lack of interest yes. and and some, sometimes even the 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 education specialists say that oh we are not um providing the right environment for boys for learning Mm -hmm. And now this, uh, so kumbaga, nag, marami na tayong problema dati and then you overlay the, the COVID pandemic and suddenly, uh, hindi talaga siya. Hirap talaga. Hindi ko, hindi ko masabi. Kasi, kasi digital divide is still very, very um, huge um, element in our, um, in our society. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, and there's a follow-up question from the same uh, participant, from uh, Mr. Dan Agustin. Uh, he asked, um, what improvements should TESDA take so that the dropouts may be reached and, in, and uh, to help, help them improve their employability? Okay. Well, TESDA has this online uh, you know, training program, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think TESDA has a lot of, of um, training programs um, that um, the, the youth can can take on. But um, we don't stop with training. Um, you know, we can provide all this training, but then if after the training, wala naman silang papasukan. So it's more about um, it's about um, you know providing what they need. So, dapat sila yung mag magawa ni mag, mag determine ano ba talaga yung ano ba yung training needs nila. And I think Tesla is is doing that, like um, um, knowing the environment, learning what the what the youth needs, ano ba yung mga uh, mga dapat na naibigay nila mga trainings, anong skills ang kailangan. Ang problema kasi we have this um detachment. Yung know, hindi masadong nag-usap yung 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 ating you know yung ano ba yung bibigyan na training wala masyadong partnership with the private sector because the private sector has the information on what kinds of workers they need um and syempre ano yan uh, uh, very very different in terms of location so um i think that that part that of that integrative or that interactive way of where where you would provide the training need of that person na talagang kailangan niya na na um that, that the person is passionate with that kind of, of um um work and then being able to find work after that so um yun yung kailangan natin isipin you have to give training but then dapat meron siyang pagtatrabaho one after and then again in these times uh, na na wala masyadong work um na nag-retrench mm -hmm. ng businesses nag-nagsha-shut ng ating mga businesses it is it's really a special and very unique uh, and uh, very difficult situation but if if we um if we will overcome this and then move on i think that um test has a, a huge role to play uh, in terms of really um um, reducing those dropout rates among boys, and um, I'm not sure about how how present are they in the rural areas um, mm -hmm. in the provinces. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's that eh? um, yes, people in 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 the cities, uh, maybe in Metro Manila, they have access to, to test the. But then mm -hmm. um, I don't know to what extent do test the also partner with with SUCs or the local yeah. um, universities or local um, is learning institutions in, in rural areas. I think yun yung, yung um, isang kailangang uh, gawa ng paraan kasi uh, from our study, we 
we've seen that a lot of these um, um, male, young, young, young workers who do not have access to social insurance, who are unpaid family workers, they're in the provinces. Uh, they're mm -hmm. many of them, uh, majority of them are in rural areas working agricultural um, mm -mm, mm -mm. activities. Mm -mm. Yeah, so thank you for, for that question. Thank you, Al. Our next question is from um, Ms. Dulce Elazegi, who is uh, watching us on Facebook. What are the constraints in the implementation or enforcement of policies governing insurance? What are the constraints? What are the constraints in the implementation or enforcement of policies governing insurance? Wow. So, um, you may not get uh, from the presentation that um, there are lots of constraints. Um, and, and, and when I always say, in natin yung implementation, maybe there are workers that ought to be having those benefits, but they're not having those benefits. Um, maybe um, it's about also the nature of their jobs because it's short term. So, hindi dito po papasok yung mga contract uh, contractualization issues that i think um needs really need to be to be addressed um they um have a difficulty accessing social insurance and when i said also about uh when I, when i mentioned also about the enforcement um maybe um dole uh, uh be more, like do more, uh, the Department of Labor and Employment, do more about, you know, really, really um, looking into um, like maybe private organizations if there are private establishments or private uh, sector or businesses who are really not providing those benefits to their workers. And sometimes it's also um, on the part of the government to really provide information um, Sometimes may mga ibang gusto maging, uh, maging members, but then they don't have the information, um, enough information. And then sometimes, um, although this is just one case, I I personally experience where in um, one office uh, turned away a person um, at the gate. So maybe it's about um, perhaps um, SSS or uh, or field health can also do a lot of, of information um, dissemination or dissemination. or education among their workers because um in that instance that particular instance that i have um experience um ang sabi daw dun sa, it's a person close to me ang sabi daw is um he guardia pa lang <laughs> hindi na siya makapasok sa sss office mm -hmm. and ang sabi is uh, siguro dahil sa ari store owner lang ako uh, I think those those kinds of, of we should not turn away people who are very enthusiastic, you know, mm -hmm. to, to be members. Um, in fact, we should, um, my, my personal view is that we should be more proactive in getting more. It's most important na mas marami yung, 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 yung covered. Um, it's, it's better for, for the, the, the business of providing or the, the service of providing social insurance it's, it's better for the, the people to say covered sila so um yun siguro uh, yun and then uh, all the other um policies syempre or kadalasan ng problema natin is more the implementation and enforcement and really having um access to to information um even with uh, the covid-19 right now ang hirap Kasi iba-iba yung sitwasyon. Minsan din namin alam kung ano na ba tayong queue. Anong, anong queue na ba tayo yung ganun. Kasi you don't have mm -hmm. a platform wherein you can get information very easily. Ang, ang, ang tagal bago mo mahanap yung gusto mo information. And I think SSS has, uh, has, has come a long way in terms of, of providing um, also information. But um, they, they, they can also improve um, in, their, in terms of you know, explaining more to the laymanized terms as a people, as a, to, to all people, um, what is the benefit really? And I think this is high time for that, for, for, for those enforcement, for those uh, improve, improvement in awareness, um, for those education uh, campaigns to really um, change mindset. Kasi nga may COVID tayo. So, see, pwede mong sabihin ngayon na, oh, tingnan mo to nangyari. And then, yeah, kasi may mentality tayo na um, sakalang tayo, 
magre-react kapag may nangyari na. Like when we were studying the, the agricultural insurance situation or agricultural insurance access of farmers, they um, became um, interested in insurance, agricultural insurance, only when they, um, only after they experience you know, the dubio or kung ano man yung mga bagyo uh, na experience nila. And so it's it's uh, understandable, but that gives us an idea that really um, the mindset has to be changed also. And also, of course, the implementation and enforcement of, of policies and programs. I hope I've answered, I've answered the question. Thank you, Al. Our next question is uh, from Annette Baleda. Uh, you mentioned uh, the four Ps, or conditional cash transfer program in your presentation. And uh, her question is, uh, for children of four Ps families who drop out of school, it was cited that high cost of education was the main reason. Aren't they eligible to avail of this to file? Yeah, the scholarships, you mean? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, the scholarships. Yeah, um, uh, I, I think they can avail of that. And I think right now there are already a lot of, of, of privileges or, or programs for the 4Ps. Meron pang SLP, meron pang ibang other programs catered to the 4Ps families and not just yung, yung cash grants na, that we have. But um, the data shows uh, that that is the case. It's still the high cost. Kasi hindi lang naman po tuition yung, yung pinoproblema ng mga bata. Um, they have to fulfill the day-to-day the -day requirements of school. And ito yung, ito yung pamasahe, ito yung baon, ito yung mga projects na kabilaan. Kailangan mag-print, um, kailangan mag-internet. Yung, yung mga ganun. So, um... Hindi, I know that um, the, the scholarships help definitely, um, but then hindi lang yun kasi yung, ano, yung, yung problema. So um, I'd rather look at it from the, the earning income security perspective or point of view. It's not something na nadadagdagan na naman natin yung ibibigay natin. Although definitely parang isipin mo tama ba, tama ba enough ba talaga yung 500 na binibigay dun sa ating mga high schoolers um, um, dun sa 4 piece. But then we really have to look at it from a broader perspective. Um, we, we really need to improve um, yung skills in yung mga parents or the employability uh, of the parents para mas ma-afford nila yung, yung schooling ng mga bata, lalo na yung mga, mga older na, yung mga pag-graduate na biglang, um, biglang nag-drop out kasi nga wala na, wala nang ano. Sila na yung mas malapit dun sa, sa threshold eh, of getting those um, educational um, um, at uh, or education. So, um, uh, uh, yes, there is, a, I think, a program, livelihood program for 4 piece, but um, there is still need, uh, we still need to provide them more opportunities for, for augmenting their income. It's still about, it's still about increasing, increasing the pie, um, the economic growth in our country, providing more um, decent work, um, uh, improving the employability uh, or uh, ensuring na mas, mas decent yung work na, na pinupuntahan ng mga tao. And then that is the more sustainable way of for them to invest in in, in human capital uh, in sending their children to school. Thank you, Al. Um, our next question is from uh, Devon Ray Pashal. Uh, Devon, please. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead with your question. Hi, good afternoon po, ma'am. Ma'am, so my question revolves around the scheme used by PhilHealth and SSS and mostly GSIS. So for the longest time, we've been using a family-based contribution system where the breadwinner is the primary member and they have dependents. So either the husband or the wife is the dependent of the primary member. Now, based on your research, Puma, would that have a negative or a positive or a notable effect on the actual coverage of women? Ah, okay. So, you, um, Devon, so you are asking whether I have covered um, the dependents of the members? Yes, ma'am. Kasi yeah. yung assumption po is yung ibang Yung iba pong um, spouses would, would be dependents 
Uh, uh, so depend you should depend on sila so feel health right and then yung SSS yeah. later on uh -oh. Okay. Oh, hindi ko siya hindi hindi ko tiningnan in that way because first yung data the APs um and um the LFS they do not really show me if these are in fact um, enrolled as dependents but but if if i if there is an information in the APs on that i i think it would it would make um the the situation better in terms of coverage um as as dependents yung iba but what i'm really after at is more on the the individual levels uh, individual person's ability to get himself or herself protected so if, if if that information would be in the APs, uh, yung mga dependents na talagang enrolled sila. Kasi minsan hindi eh. Or pwedeng may mangyaring iba na hindi na siya maging dependent. So it's it's a very um, individual-based analysis I think that we we, we did. Um, we want to know. Kasi ako, um, kunyar dependent ako ni, hus ni husband and I'm I'm entitled to the benefits then. Definitely sa field health, um, yeah, but in terms of dun sa, sa ability ko uh, to also um, access social insurance, kaya gusto, parang mas gusto ko yun. Eh. So parang yun yung, yung tinignan namin na perspective dun sa analysis. But if there will be um, data in the future that would help me, that, were, that would guarantee that these are really um, dependents of the head, um, yeah, it, it would be, it would um, improve, I think, the situation there. Kaya merong mga, ano, may mga studies na sinasabi nila na, oh, we have already covered um, the whole population because we have covered the heads. Parang may mga, may mga ganong studies. Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. All right, Gavin. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Devon. Um, okay, for our next question, let's hear it from... Uh, Kirsten, Kirsten Itlion. Hi, Kirsten. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, Kirsten, go ahead. Please let us know uh, your affiliation, please. Your, your affiliation, Kirsten. Uh, International Institute of Rural Reconstruction. Okay, sige. Go ahead, Iha. Uh, yung question po ay, meron po bang relevant na results na or data na makapag-back up? Kasi ang common thinking po sa mga low income or mga daily wage earners ay maghulog kami sa social protection program. Okay. Si Kirsten. Kirsten? Medyo, well, she's having some technical difficulties sa kanyang... Okay. Sige, Kirsten. Hello? So, yun na na. Uunahin. Oo. Kirsten, could you please repeat your question? Kasi naputol ka kanina. Kirsten. Oh. Okay, naput. Okay. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, Kirsten, we could not fully understand you. Uh, can I just can I just read your your questions a chat box? Okay, yes. we'll just uh, I'll just read Kirsten's question. Uh, were there any relevant results validating the common thinking that low income and or daily wage earners seek access to more short term financial access rather than waiting for 60 year, years old retirement or occurrence of illness? It seems community savings group are appealing to informal earners and community members due to the easy loan requirements um, is there a data that will 
say. Okay, were there any relevant results validating the common thinking that low income low income or, or and or daily wage earners seek access to more short term financial access rather than wait for 60 years old uh, for their retirement or when when an illness occurs. Sabi niya, it seems community savings group are appealing. It seems community savings groups are, are appealing to informal earners and community members due to easy loan requirements. Okay, okay. Um, in terms of dun sa data, kung mer sabi niya kung merang bang studies that uh, look into that. Um, mm -hmm. yung, yung kanyang behavior yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we did not look into that because definitely we are limited to the the data that we used, but it's definitely um, an interesting study that, that can be done in the future. And I, I understand that the circumstances nila na yung short term, the workers, um, they, they seek, you know, ayon nila nung, nung, nung kumbaga, SSS kasi matagal pa naman nila ma, ma, makukuha yung benefits. They wait until 60, right? And they, they, mm. they want to have it. Um, it. It would be an interesting study, but it's something that we we, we did not um, examine in this this paper um, but but yeah that's understandable because um meron na ngayon mga um, short term um, schemes sa mga mga financial institutions mga 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 Cebuana, ganun, mga insur insurance dun eh. so i think that if that is what she she, she means um, um hindi pa nakasama dun dun sa so that's something that that, that the ap scan can uh, improve uh, on in terms oh. of expanding ano ba yung oh. programs kasama nila kasama dapat yung alkansya eh, kung kung hindi man siya SSS member baka to baka ito member siya ng community based yung mga oh. savings uh, program na ganun mm -hmm. so i think uh, unfortunately the official data that the ap that we're looking at is um, doesn't doesn't have those information there are yeah. a lot of programs in there sa so ap's pero if you look at them and unti na kasi Examples for us then to you know to to um, analyze further kapag masyado ng maliit yung sample ang hirap na gumawa ng mga, mga analysis but those kinds of studies I think dapat ano siya mas qualitative um, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's a good uh, it's a good uh, an interesting study to to work into sana in the future if we have time maganda yun eh kasi yun pala yung coping mechanism nila yun pala yung yes. yun yung yun yung it, that's the scheme wherein they have a uh, huge buy-in buy kesa dun sa mga mas formal na SSS. Mm -mm. And, and I really appreciate that that uh, yeah. um, uh, mentioned that kasi yeah. you know, what if what if pala they're pro protected of, uh, through other means um, and that would be really interesting to look into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those mga informal ano, yeah. Ano, informal schemes no in the community. Kasi okay. Kasi dun sa, sa need eh, sa need nga ng tao, mm -hmm. sabi sa Sabi niya, uh, mas, mas accessible for them kapag ganun. Lagi like, mga paluwagan, ganun. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay. Yeah. Let's now hear from Jane, Jane Acera, who is from, uh, I think, from the Department of Health. Jane? Go ahead with your question, Jane. Yes, Apo. This is... Hi, yes, Apo. This is Jane from HPDP before. So, um, my question is... Um, Kasi it's very good no, that was presented about um, the gaps in social insurance uh, farming sector because, of course, we realize that they're the most vulnerable. And it's not just an issue about, well, aside from or apart from the payment schemes and then unemployment, then it's something um, uh, infrastructure-wise. And then kasi most of them live in far-flung areas. So, Medyo hassle or it's parang it, it goes to the bottom of their priorities if pagpunta pa lang to pay sa mga more like city or more kung saan yung pay, payment centers mahirap na. So, would it be possible po if um, our social insurance systems or programs natin can partner or can adapt um, the approach of the Department of Agriculture po working on mga organized farming or people's organization even not just limited to farmers so women's in rural or farming areas so in 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 a change behaviors perspective 
Like, this is something that's long term. I say we're working on changing the mindset and change behavior wise. Uh, this could be more sustainable. I say this won't have alternative and change um, people's overnight, especially in um, in in the far flung areas. They're still very much into traditional medicine, so something that most of their concern is if we put it that way. So that's my question. But if we can um, adapt or at least incorporate some of the aspects or approach to um, be part of the agriculture matters. Thank you, Jane. Uh oh, yeah. So actually. Yeah, so well, uh, towards the end of my presentation, when I provided the recommendations, I really um, focus on the role of other um, actors, like um, young people's organizations, young NGOs, you, even the LGU partnering with this. Um, I, I think I feel that um, sabihin kasi nung iba, oh, hindi, namin, hindi namin mandate yan or, or anything like that. But I think that um, for these people from the rural areas to really have access to as many schemes as there are, whether this is community-based or etoi short-term loans lang sa mga from the like the Cebuanas and all, they have to have those options um, um, in front of them. And I feel that dapat may mas may aggressive yung yung role ng ng mga local governments simply because they are the ones on the ground and they have to partner with the organizations. You know, they, the people's organizations, like what you said, yung ginagawa ng DA, definitely yun yung gusto kong ta. Also in terms of in improving awareness. So the NGOs and the people's organizations can also partner with, with um, say, SSS or other other um, agencies, relevant agencies uh, in insurance and even ano, even um, BSP in terms of the financial literacy. Um, also, um, so that um, we can increase awareness, uh, improve the information of people. Sabi mo nga yung mga tao doon, yung parin traditional medicines pa rin. Ano nila? Kasi the, mahirap for them to ano eh, to to get the information and then to move just to get information. So they are already always preoccupied with their with their um, livelihood. Kung ano man yung pinagkakakita, like yung mga farmers, yung mga farmers' wives. Araw-araw yun yung ginagawa nila. They really don't have time to 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 go around and get uh, other information from 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 um, people. And so it should be the role of the the, the local governments and uh, the, the organizations, the people's organizations, the stake stakeholders on the ground to really help them. Um, um, sana maintindihan nila na yung mga economic improvements, the other the other infrastructural um, projects that they're doing it's really for improving people's lives and improving income security and kasama to eh kasama to yung social insurance yung having enough buffer for people to 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 uh to turn to when when there are um, difficult circumstances like may may pagyo or may sickness or suddenly may, may virus may covid-19 hindi ka pwedeng umalis so um yeah i i agree with you um definitely um um, there should be more partnerships, more collaborations among these bodies, and they should work together uh, towards uh, improving the, the mindset, improving the information that people have, and, and improving the the ability of people to to access um, these kinds of, of, of schemes, insurance schemes, um, regardless of, of the nature of mga schemes. Na to, as long as nakakatulong sa, sa kanila situation. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for that, Al. Uh, our next question is uh, from Leonil, Leonil Dagli Tanyag. Uh, Leonil? Hello? Yes, Hello? go ahead with your question, Leonil. Yes. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my question is about indigenous women. You see, uh, my paper my, on, on my graduate study is about indigenous women. I have noticed that there was no mention about sa social accessibility of these indigenous women. Uh, is there a possibility that your office will come up with studies related to them? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Aubrey, before you answer that question, may I just say that... Uh, Dr. Mary Rosellis has a related question to that. Um, 
Yes. Dr. Racelis asks, do you have enough data on IPs to see to what extent their situations require different and or similar access mechanisms? Yes. Okay, thank you. So for the IPs, um, I'm afraid we were not able to look into their uh, situation similarly with the persons with disability, basically because of data limitation. So, um, or even if um, um, we have um, information, maliit na lang po yung kanilang sample um, for that. Um, okay. But I think we have um, studies at PITS on indigenous um, people or in the past, I think in poverty, but I haven't, um, it's, it's not part of this study. But we can share you that. Um, yeah. Definitely, it's very important to have this, as I've mentioned earlier, ang isa sa problema po natin is the lack of granularity in our data. So we don't have um, um, enough information, for instance, enough sample for the marginalized groups uh, yeah. to warrant um, a rigorous analysis of their situation. It's kapag ganito po kasi, usually at PIDS, what do we do is that we do it, we do a separate study for them. And we conduct uh, our own primary data gathering para mal ma ma malaman namin yung kanilang mga, uh, mga situation, like the, the persons with disabilities. We, we did this um, several times. Um, and then um, for the IPs, I think we had, we have one. Uh, I think it's a paper that is recently been um, 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 done by, by my colleagues, I think that's headed by by our president. It's a study that we can share. Oh, but for this study, unfortunately, we were not able to to to, to include that as a, a category of, of worker, basically because of the lack of data. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I, I I agree that they're very important. So that is why when we when we uh, treat them or when we analyze them at the ideas, we normally do. We normally um, um, analyze them separately uh, using more data and we uh, conduct our own data um, gathering activities for that. Okay. 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 Thank you. So our next question is from um, uh, Dorothea Boy Navarro. Hello. Yeah. Yes, go ahead with your question and may we know your affiliation for. Hello, ma'am, go ahead. My, my, my mic. Okay, ma'am. Naka-on na po yung mic nyo. Okay. Sige, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So my question, uh, kasi I remember before, there's this project... There's this program that connects yung, yung support ng LGU, sponsorship for indigents, with the improvement in facilities also. So there, there's the capitation fund uh, that sorts of uh, provide incentives to LGU. I think that there was a good uh, program before. I'm just wondering whether uh, sa level ng field health, if there's field health in this, uh, in this uh, webinar, who can answer because i think that's one way also of ensuring that the indigents can can still be supported in terms of social uh, insurance mam na narinig niyo po yung ano ko yes uh, is uh, the, the question i think Michelle, is directed to feel health yeah, if there's someone from Philip, because I think that's a good, that was a good program. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it, it works both ways, no? So, nagsusuportahan yung, nagsusuportahan yung indigents, but at the same time, it provides an incentive also to the LGUs to also improve. So, di ba, umiikot, nagpuprovide ng service, nag improve Yes. Uh -oh. Actually, we have a, someone asked a question kanina, si Mr. Devon Ray. Pashal and he is from Bill Health. So yeah, if there is uh if we can get the uh, response of Bill Health on this. Okay, perhaps we can go back to that. Pagga uh, nag nagano si someone from Bill Health. 
Okay. Okay lang ba, ma'am? Yes, Sige. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Balik po okay. tayo mamaya. Let's start yes, the question sure. and then we will wait uh, uh, someone from, uh, from, from PhilHealth to respond. Okay. Let us now go to the next question. And this is, one is from Anep Baleda, who is from uh, the Philippine Chief of the Policy Development Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation Division of the Philippine Commission on Women. Ms. Anep? Go ahead, Pa. Hi, Miss Anet. Hello. Okay. Uh, it seems that uh, yeah, we can reach uh Miss Anet uh right now. So let's go back to Miss Anet. Once he, when she is available. Okay, uh huh. Let's ask from let's let's go to our uh, Facebook viewers. And uh, this one is from Rex Bison. Okay, and he asked, don't you think the government should formulate some kind of incentive? driven scheme to make sure the parents will be there to watch over their children during online classes. Is incentive may be monetary or it may become part of the learner's requirement or project. Um, is there an incentive driven scheme for parents to supervise the children? To make sure the parents will, will be there to watch over their children do online classes. Um, I'm not sure about that, but um, if the the parent also has, you the parent needs to go to work, um, perhaps. I'm not sure. Um, what is the concern about the parents should be able to um, supervise um, the the children in their online classes? Um, um, for instance, if 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 it's a teacher between the teacher and the student and they are conversing, you want the parent to be supervising the child is that is that the purpose of that um because for me um if if that happens to my children and i would be uh, compelled to stay with my child <laughs> what of my work um, um so maybe there, there is another um maybe he has a, an, an objective in, in um, raising the question uh, what is the the other objective or do you want um do you feel that when the the parents are supervising the children do they get um, do, do they get more out of it is that what you want or do you want um that children are prevented from doing other things online <laughs> and so the parent has to be there is is, is that the, the the situation there because um um for the government to provide incentives for all parents of how many million children for them to stay with their children while online. It would be very costly, I think. Um, um, yeah, so that would be, I'm still thinking, what um, is advantage of that? Um, except from the fact that he knows his mother, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's like a policing, or he's just watching his son, what he's doing. And for a parent who may work, uh, definitely, kung five kung gaano katagal yon so parang um, i wouldn't i would not be comfortable um, also as a parent to to maybe when there are um, there are, there are things that i need to supervise about like nahirapan siya and all but um, but i don't think i'd be able to sit uh, sit um, on that um, as a parent in you know, supervising my child doing online um, learning I'd prefer they do it on their own uh, without me uh, telling them or and they wouldn't want me there, I guess. <laughs> uh, they probably want to be left alone when they're doing the, the, the online work. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe others have uh, a different idea, but. OK, thank you for that, Al. Our, um... Our friend from the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth, Mr. Devon Ray Pashal, is now ready to make a response. Uh, 
to the question of uh, Ms. Dorothea Boy Navarro. And may I repeat that the question of Ms. Navarro. She asked, uh, for PhilHealth, is LGU sponsorship of indigent families still going on? Earlier, this was coupled by a program where LGUs can earn some capitation fund from services rendered by PhilHealth accredited LGU facilities, which LGUs can use to further improve their services and likewise provide incentive to health workers. I find this is a good scheme to ensure coverage of those who need social protection. Is this still ongoing? And if not, what is now the alternative program? Mr. Pas Mr. Pashal, please. Hello, ma'am. Your microphone is now on. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, so for okay. according to the Universal Healthcare Act, the national government should be the primary coverer of the in, in of all indigent families because your indigent families are part of your indirect contributory members. However, since we're still on go the transition of the financing is still going on, we're still setting things up with the DOH and with the LGUs. So right now we still have LGU sponsorship. We are still encouraging LGUs to continue to sponsor ancient families for as long as we still do not have an alternative program yet. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Pashal. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, our next, uh, our next question is from uh, Ricardo Toquero. Hello, sir. Please go ahead for your question. Mr. Toquero is from the Department of Finance, Economist 5, Office of the Chief Economist. Mr. Toquero. Hello, sir. Okay, uh, let me just read his question out. Mm -hmm. Okay, GSIS and SSS membership is more straightforward and easier to manage. Nonetheless, with the universal healthcare law now in place, can we expect a much better scenario for the informal sector? It is true that awareness and appreciation of the value of insurance coverage are really an issue in the informal sector aside from affordability. It is also a cultural issue. I think universal coverage is a sensible option while we try to address the employability and retooling issues with TESDA. Any reaction? Any comment on that? Um, of course, I'm, I'm hopeful um, that with the universal, universal health care law, um, their situation will, will improve um, significantly. However, um, um, right now, I think it has been um, I call put on hold, or at least I've heard a while ago that the, 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 the universal health care law um, is still being um, sort of um, examined. I've been part of a, a meeting wherein they are um, looking into um, implementing this in pilot provinces. Um, so how this would um, be um, implemented um, is something that um, we still need to find out. And um, from here onwards, we will know whether their situation will will improve um, when we, we get to the data. Um, as researchers, of course, um, we will have to look into um, into that in, in, in a more evidence-based um, kind of, of way. But yeah, I, I hope that, um, and I'm hopeful that it will be, it will um, be implemented in a way that will really improve the situation of, of informal workers. Um, yeah, but thank you for that. Um, we, uh, we looked into our data and um, I think one of the inadequate or the, the deficiencies there is that um, we did not look into the other the programs that could uh, really um, help improve the situation. But um, this is something that we can do again um, in, in, in the near, near future, like monitor what is happening um, to these um, workers. Um, so that will be our um, sort of um, basis for saying that, yeah, yeah it, it, that the situation has improved or not improved or still need uh, lots of work to do. So hopefully, sign up all. 
Thank you, Al. Uh, let us go back to Ms. Annette Baleda of the Philippine Commission on Women. Annette, are you? I think she is now ready for her question. Annette? Hello, Annette? Annette, please go ahead. Annette, go ahead with your question. Your mic is on. Hello, Annette. Okay, I I think she's having difficulty uh, getting through, but her mic is already on. Her question actually is on social insurance coverage for those doing unpaid care work. Would you have any comment on this, Al? Yeah, I presented um, one of the um, classes of workers that I presented um, is um, the unpaid uh, family workers. And for, um, let me just go through my slide. Um, slide, I think, number nine, if I'm not mistaken. So um, the, the employed um, persons who are non-members um, in both the schemes that we have, in the schemes that we are examining, um, there were 14% um, unpaid family workers in this situation, 14.6 14 14 of the total. So uh, in terms of number, uh, let me just get my, my because I, did, I, I only put here the, um, the percentages. Okay, I'm just looking at my data right now. Let me just go through that. Sorry. Unpaid family members. Okay. Um, for women, there are about um, a million uh, women who are um, unpaid workers and non-members. There, are, there is relatively a uh, um, um, lower or, or smaller number in terms of the, the, the male workers, around 700,000 of them. Um, and um, their situation are that I've um, um, mentioned a while ago is that most of them are farm laborers, um, even for, for women. So 75% of the, the unpaid um, unpaid uh, workers who do not have access to social insurance and are also poor are um are farm uh, laborers and in in terms of the women it's 69 percent of them um are in that category yes i think there is a follow-up question i that, it, that popped up um Ms. Sheila, can you just just check that for for a bit Okay, um, please cite sample interventions that would help improve social insurance for those doing unpaid care work. Okay, yeah, so the, just some examples. If, if you look at them uh, from the, the, the gender perspectives, um, um, the men, they're single, um, they're very young. So sila po yung mga nagtatrabaho sa mga, unpaid, mga farm um, ng mga, mga families nila. So they're, they're unpaid. For the women, um, these are also the case. Those are helping out in terms of their their family, um, uh, family operated farms or, or businesses. So, the, the ang situation kasi ng women dito is they are more um, married. They're they're taking care of their families. They do not um, have um, opportunity to have other work. Uh, yung sa mga male naman, eto yung as I've said earlier. This is connected to the to the, the male uh, young people who drop out of school early. So what they get into is that they go, they, they, they get themselves employed, but many of them uh, become unpaid family workers. So yung, yung family nila, was to be siguro, oh, mag-drop out ka na. Um, so ano ba yung interventions for that? And I mentioned a while ago that um, we have to understand their situation more. Um, we have to improve help them improve like the people in the agricultural areas kasi yun yung main ano eh yun yung main sector ng unpaid family workers yung agricultural um area so you have um to have initiatives or efforts that improve agricultural productivity but not only that because agriculture um has this seasonality in it there has to ha they, they they should have um also off farm 
uh, income opportunities. Um, so maybe sabi natin, oh yeah, um, pwede naman sa construction. So when they're not do, doing this, for, like for, for when they're not doing farming, they are in construction, um, being farm farm hands, uh, or or they do other ad jobs. Yun yung nangyayari sa kanila. And then these uh, are these jobs are are those that do not really pay much. And because they drop out early, basically, basically kasi yung mga um, unpaid workers, um, they have um, low educational attainment. So yung, yung, yung options nila in terms of working is really, uh, wala masyado. Uh, so they're stuck there. And then that will happen, that will persist kasi they did not, they did not continue their studies. Hindi naman yung, kunyari, okay, uh, ngayon tutulong ka sa amin, sabi nung, nung siguro nung farmer na tatay, and then, and then you can go back. Ang nangyayari, hindi na. So, so although they're not counted as not in employment or education, di ba, we have this this low um, knee rate among boys, among uh, young, um, boy, young, young men. Ang nangyayari, di, napupunta sila sa mga work na Una, hindi naman sila, wala naman silang sweldo, they're unpaid, and then pwede sa mga, mga odd jobs, uh, elementary uh, occupations. Um, so, they're stuck there until they become, you know, they, they have families, and, and that will persist um, through, through the years, magiging, ano sila, magiging, syempre, magiging farmer uh, din siguro sila. And as long as hindi productive masyado yung ating, ating agriculture, ganun yung mangyayari. Um, so, it's more for me it's more uh, looking at this from a holistic perspective paano ba natin improve yung yung other income opportunities um, in the rural areas in these agricultural um, in, in the areas where these agricultural agricultural workers are kasi most of the time ando sa farm pero minsan kung kung wala naman na silang of season kailangan nila ng ibang opportunities and so that uh, it, it we need to have those um more vibrant or or, or more or better um, off farm work opportunities for them mm -hmm. and this needs to be tied to the overall strategy of economic development in the rural areas yeah. so mm -hmm. hindi siya pwedeng ihiwalay um mm -hmm. and then hindi rin pwedeng ihiwalay to the school bakit Bakit ka ba sila nawawalan na rin ng, ng, ng gana? Siguro kung lagi naman sila pinag-a-absent, syempre hindi na sila makakabalik doon, mahihiya na sila. And then, um, maisip nila, mag, baka mag-aral ako, wala din naman akong trabaho dito. Yung mga, yung mga ganun. So, it, it, it goes deeper, I think, um, yeah. in terms of, of, of the social aspects, the economic mm -hmm. aspects, cultural aspect na mentioned kanina. But uh, oh. there, there's there's a lot of things that we need to, to work on on that part. Mm -hmm. Kasi if, and then if these problems, they start early eh. They start early. So even if you address, for instance, begin mo ng, 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 from the sponsored uh, programs, bigyan mo to ng access sa insurance, maybe bigyan mo siya ngayon, uh, or the, the indigent programs, they will get this. Mm -hmm. But if we do not tackle the, the, the problems from the start, mm -hmm. dun sa, dun sa pag-improve ng employability ng ating mga, mga bata, and then, hindi lang yun, we, we don't stop in their schooling. Um, do they have the right environment para ma-employ? Kasi yeah. we seem to, sige, yung mga tao, like sa, sa province namin, patutuwa sila kasi yeah, nag-graduate yung anak nila uh, sa college, pero marami doon, wala talagang work. And um, I think these are the ones who are um, also driven out then and to, to, to migrate um abroad and work um, which is understandable because they are looking for ways for them to improve their situation but then so yeah it, it is a very um, complicated thing issue and it starts yes. with social insurance so uh, kabit -kabit siya. so thank uh -huh. you for that question thank you very much al um let's now let's let's entertain some questions from our facebook viewers and this one is from ruben tadina he asked uh Okay, his comment is uh, social insurance may well be within the province of party list representatives representing the vulnerable sectors of the economy. Have they been consulted in providing mechanisms, uh, much less expanding social insurance? Have we consulted um, 
Sorry, who? Have, have they been consulted? Uh, and he's asking about this uh, mga uh, party list representatives. Have they been consulted in pro in providing mechanisms for expanding uh, social insurance? Um, hindi po, kasi yung Hamming study is an empirical um, study. Mm -hmm. It's meant to provide um, an understanding of what is happening with this um, with this um, with these workers or with those mm -hmm. who are not employed. Um, in fact, yung, yung purpose ng study nito is really to give them those information that may, that they may need when they advocate or when they decide for the mechanisms. Good to hear what what they're gonna say about it. Yes. Um, what their opinions are. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, maybe in, in our next um studies we may yeah. Yeah. Sila mga insights. It would be good. Um, but then this is about um, characterizing, kasi profiling mm -hmm. the people. Um, yeah. So if if it were about strategies, um, um, it, if if the paper were centered or were, were focused on like um, how do our policymakers approach mm -hmm. this problem? Yeah, probably I would have um, um, interviewed them for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Actually, if I may just share, there have been initiatives lately in terms of uh, uh, legislation. Ano? So, for, for example, there was a bill filed in, in the House of Representatives, uh, which actually mandates government to subsidize the creation of a scheme, no? which will cover the SSS premium of qualified workers for, for 10 years. And this is intended for... Ano, for farmers and fisher folk. It's like, it's, I think, H House Bill, uh, the House, the, the, the bill is called National Farmers and Fisher Folk Security, Social Security Act, Social Security and Pension Act. And this bill is authored by a senior, senior citizen party list representative, uh, uh, Milagros Aquino Magsaysay. So, may, meron namang gadong initiatives. And we, if there is, uh, if there's additional information from uh, participants from, let's say, the House of Representatives or the Senate, we welcome your your insights or your comments on on, on this. Okay. See, so, yeah, Let's now proceed to. Uh, okay, this is a um, a question, a comment, and a question from Maria Helen Dayo. Okay. She said a COVID crisis is a crisis of social protection, especially those in the informal sector, including our health workers. Recommendations given like expanding membership in social insurance is a challenge for the sector. How do you think can this be carried out? Uh, kanina meron namang, meron nang binigay na response ang ating, uh, Ang ating SSS, ano, in terms of the Alpan shop. Pero would you have additional insights on this or an, mm -hmm. uh, additional response, uh, Al? Yeah. So apart from those um, which I have already um, outlined or, or, or discussed a while ago, I, I feel that we have to to look at this or or address this in a more aggressive way. Um, more more now more than ever, no? Kasi nga gawa ng ng COVID nineteen. This is really it's not it's no longer or it's not just a health issue it's really a social protection issue especially mm -hmm. for the very uh, lots of people in the informal sectors uh, a lot of, of uh, still a uh, lot of uh, poor um, um, who cannot meet their even their their daily needs even prior to this so what more on so uh, i think it's for me no uh, apart from the uh, which is good, men na kanina ng SSS, they are expanding their ways to to collect. Um, they are uh, mas okay siguro pag may nakita na ako na parang uh, app like you can pay online. All those stuff na pwede natin gawin ngayon, makipag partner. Um, I hope and I'm sure or maybe there's already an, an initiative on that. But if SSS would partner to as many um, financial institutions as they can in terms of Kung saan magbabayad, we, we have to make this easy for people. We have to really win them to be to be part of the, the, the formal insurance um, system. And it's it's it should not be 
although I said na sana mas aggressive uh, pa yung mga initiatives, it should not be just the SSS. It has to be uh, a more collective um, effort. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, alam na ng mga, ng mga local government workers, uh, local, mm -hmm. local government um, units that that they have this kind of people that that have this and alam nila na madan sila in digest and so they have to be more proactive about it um, and um apart from providing incentives um or di ba meron bibigay for farmers uh, you mentioned a while ago um yes they are good but for me um this um sort of reactionary sort of reactionary measure or maybe a proactive in a sense must be um complemented with with a broader kind of effort to really improve the way of life in general so huwag natin tungkunin tanggalin at ito ah pagbinigyan ko pala to ng 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 pag tinulungan ko pala to uh, into getting feel health Okay na. Uh, so, hindi dapat siya ganun. I don't look at it that way because I've, as you've seen in when I presented, I tried to be really uh, tackle yung parang pinagmumulan nito. Saan ba ito galing? And it's a much deeper issue than, than, than sometimes the way we see it. So, it's, it's mm -hmm. uh, I want to have a more aggressive take on this. Like, for instance, I'm sure it would be very costly then. Kunyari, mm -hmm. um, merong member na bigla na lang nawala. Do we even have the facility to win them back ano nangyari um um for me yun yun eh uh, i know it's a lot of work <laughs> to to really mm -hmm. you know but it would it would be really for me um like kunyari hindi ako kapagkulong kasi because of other circumstances you don't know um tapos mm -hmm. sana may mag ano na parang uh, kahit man lang pop up na no email ko mm -hmm. pa, email man ako or, or mm -hmm. text uh, ano pang parang you have eh, ganyan ganyan para lang din maano yung tao na ah kailangan pala ano kasi so that people will not take this passively then They, kasi it's it's mindset eh. yung sustainable way gaya na nabanggit kanina yung sustainable way really is for the person to really feel na importante to Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. hihila siya ng hingi ng, ng favor from from other parties. Mag-aantay mm -hmm. lang siya na bibigyan siya. So that's why I was explaining before that I'm looking at this from the people, the, the, the individual empowering perspective, not being independent or anything. It's, it's really more my ability to really have myself protected. Although I'm a part of a family and I'm, I'm a dependent of, of, of somebody and uh, what I want is really to, to capture that. Yun yung kinakapture natin dito. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's now uh, go to the question of uh, Sir Sis, uh, Nitafan, uh, Director Nitafan of the uh, uh, CEPO, no? Senate Economic and Planning Office. Sabi niya, just curious, were the respondents in your study who have insurance of their own? like life insurance I okay. guess how how many of them would have such personal life insurance because somehow this may be considered by such respondents to getting better returns or benefits from what government insurance systems or agencies would be offering or giving HMO so parang siguro um we did not uh profile them basically because mm -hmm. it lang nilang proportion po mm -hmm. that is what yung, yung yung mga personal life insurance yung mga iba pang if they are accessing for instance um, retirement plans from mm -hmm. like banks uh, you know um it siya eh, na proportion i can um i can go back and maybe look at the data but but when we look at it napaka small nyang yang proportion dun sa overall if if you look at mm -hmm. it uh, from the national um but yeah maybe we can look at it but it's it would be very difficult to to do uh, an analysis on that kasi kung konti lang yung, yung, yung as i've mentioned or kung konti lang yung sample mo mahirap hindi representative po yung mga magiging profile na makukuha namin like nasaan mm -hmm. sila uh, ano ba yung mm -hmm. income level it wouldn't be really representative kasi maliit lang yung yung portion na yun on that sample Okay, thank you for that, Ao. No, kanina we were talking about sustainability and of, uh, let's say, uh, social protection coverage, and and we have uh, a question, a, a question from Jan Michelle Magbal, uh, one of our face, Facebook viewers. 
he 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 asks, no, how are we start how are we to start moving forward with promoting social insurance in time of in the time of COVID, given that our government is now lacking funds for mm -hmm. our, for all the relief operations to survive? Yeah, I know everything is difficult right now. Um, maghirap ng uh, lumabas lang, di ba? So, but I think that what happened to us now is it has the ability to change minds, um, mindsets, behavior. Uh, now that we can show people na see, uh, we can be in this situation we're in, kahit nga yung may work before, helpless siya ngayon. So, uh, it, it's, it's, how do we go from here? We have to start by really um yeah improving the mindset and uh, really selling the importance of having insurance um or maybe uh improving financial literacy kasi uh, we are we are used to our life na aba okay lang kasi tomorrow i have meron naman ako sweldo or kaya for for the workers they, we really don't have i i feel i mean personally speaking um, i feel that we have uh, we need to improve more in terms of our mindset for preparing in the for, for our future um na nasanay i think nasanay lang tayo kasi na we can rely on on our family uh on, on people uh, who are close to us and that's understandable kasi yun yung kultura natin eh. we we face things as as a group as a family we can always um we, we always or we usually have someone to 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 turn on to kapag may problema pero ano ba talaga yung 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 personal natin na ano ba, na ginagawa para magkaroon tayo ng protection para magkaroon tayo ng buffer para hindi tayo yung yung laging we live by the day siguro yan it's it's really uh, an important now to for the government and other stakeholders their partners um to have this um to change mindsets to to make sure na ano man yung lesson na nakuha natin dito sa COVID-19 is talagang we carry that. So, and then I feel that, um, I'm sure, I mean, or um, most of the time, magiging ano tayo, magiging from this onward, from this point onward, magiging ano na tayo. Oh, kailangan pala, meron akong kahit man lang savings. Yung ganun, um, I think BSP, um, BSP has been doing a lot of financial literacy at the local government level i think it's also something that they really need to 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 to, to do um um malaki yung, yung yung part i'm always looking i'm always going back to the local government because they're they're nearer eh. hindi naman din we don't don't expect people to really um seek for information um uh, bigla bigla na lang hindi um um we have to give them those information we have to kung meron mang mga mga advocates um, na nandoon on the ground yun yung kailangan nilang um, part, mag partner sila um, kung wala so they they have to do it um, also on their own or they have to to improve yung yung ability of people also to organize themselves kasi kailangan yung mga yun eh yung mga social aspects na yun so um, from this covid-19 pandemic yes ma mahirap mahirap but um, it should teach us a lesson and and, it, and it taught, us, it taught us the lesson the hard way and kailangan magkaroon ng change of mindsets um, we have to be more proactive with with social protection and with our uh, own uh, ability our, our own willingness to protect ourselves from from risks thank you al well go, going back to your study and all we have a, a question from uh tess lagarto um she asks uh does Social protection coverage consider only membership in social insurance. Do you think gender gap would could be wider if actual access to benefits and not mere membership was included in the analysis? Kasi yung sa analysis more on coverage, no? Yes, yung, yes. Yung ano talaga, receipt of actual benefits, hindi siya na-cover. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's why we were, uh, when, I, uh, when I showed you the data that we are using, it's really coverage tas ito lang siya ito lang siya na na, na na reference period kung ano yung tiningnan namin remember insurance kailangan ang social ang social insurance kailangan ano siya sustained siya di ba hindi lang siya yung yung um for this period okay na hindi hindi siya ganun so we um we're not able to capture that um part 
this is just um, access because as I've mentioned earlier, we are limited to the to the data that we have. It would be good to have um, a complementary study on this one that would really um, be uh, more how do you call it? that would be more detailed in terms of uh, sustain sustain ba or talaga nakapag access pa sila ng benefit. Pwede namang kasing um, member lang sila but they're not accessing the benefits or there there are different barriers for them. Like gusto man nilang mag, mag apply ng loan or ano hindi naman nila kaya kasi malayo sila or iba yung circumstances nila. So wala po, well, well, unfortunately wala dun sa so study yun. So this is just a very plain membership uh, coverage um, expansion. And our idea is that um, we need to, kung meron mong managing problema dun sa talagang pag-benefit on these programs, we need to, nevertheless, we need to expand uh, membership. Mm -hmm. We need to, to have as many people uh, as we can in, into the fold, into the, mm -hmm. to the protected yeah. ones, parang ganun. Uh, perhaps a follow-up study, uh, oh, no? kayo ni Carlos. No? <laughs> It'll be good, yes. Sana yes. makalabas na kami, tapos makapag- Yeah. <laughs> so right now, pwede na masiguro on the phone, pero- Ang hirap din for us uh, doing research um, okay. in these times. Okay. Uh, you and Ma'am Sel have done uh, many studies on the four Ps. No? And this question is about the four Ps. So, sabi niya, uh, did your study, and I think she's uh, referring to this current study, is did, did your study look into the beneficiaries of four Ps where the majority is, is women? Uh, the four Ps provides... Women empowerment through uh, the FBS mm -hmm. and other activities that in, that will improve their social skills. These skills, together with the other anti-poverty programs, women will have access to these programs, and later on they will prioritize social protection programs. So she's saying. Okay. Uh, so the four piece in the study, we we examined the school participation ng children na nasa loob ng mga four piece families um particularly dun sa I mean nakita niyo yung 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 graph kanina that by age group ay by age I think single age pa nga yung ginawa namin para makita namin yung, yung sitwasyon um but we did not look into whether these women uh mm -hmm. ano yung effect nila ano yung effect ng pagiging um or, or what is the effect of their uh, Attendance to FDS. Yes, the family yeah. development yeah. sessions. Yeah, it, so it has an um, effect on you know making yeah, them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, in, in in other studies that we did, in, in for instance, we did the the, the study in terms of the, the nutrition, um, the health mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of children. We found that um, although hindi yun yung intention, and alaman namin uh -oh. na usually these these programs, kung sino yung mga comply dun sa mga like mga babakuna, ganon ng mga mm. bata. It's really the four piece kasi may, may condition eh. So so so, so mm -hmm. the ground ginagamit nila yon, ginagamit yon ng ating mga health workers. Mm -hmm. uh, parang ginagamit nila na sa FDS yung mga they use the FDS as a as an avenue to really educate um women um and advocate also for 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 them to avail of the many services of the government. I think it's a very a uh, useful and effective platform. That is why in that study we we said that dapat yung FDS hindi na lang siya four piece. It mm -hmm. has to be broader. Kasi um yung iba pag hindi four piece medyo medyo ayaw makipag cooperate sa mga mm -hmm. mga programs. Ima ang four piece medyo takot sila eh, kasi if if may they don't, conditionality they don't, yes may conditionality mm -hmm. may and conditionality. I think it helps. It really helps that the na, na may conditionality because otherwise hindi sila pupunta doon and they are getting quite a lot of of benefits uh, from there so i we we in that study um about uh, the health and nutrition of young children which we 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 um did um in a few provinces um in the south the southern part of the philippines is that the fds is a really useful platform and it has mm -hmm. to be uh, made um, broader. Dapat cater niya hindi na lang for peace. Kasi it's very useful. It's very useful to peep, to 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 draw people together also. Um, para magkaroon sila na parang sort of organization, an informal organization among themselves. Hindi lang yun eh. It's it's useful for information and education campaigns, for improving uh, advocacy, and for implementation of programs. Kasi uh, kapag nandun na sila, dun na din nini-implement yung iba pang mga programs dun sa, uh, sa mga uh, lugar na to. So yeah, 
Um, but in our study here, it, it, it's not part, that is a part of the, the study. Okay. Thank you, Al. Uh, that, con that comment is from uh, Donna Michelle Torres Booking. Thank you, Donna, for your, for your insight. Okay, let's go back to our uh, participants in uh, WebEx. Uh, and our next question is from uh, Director Ringo Morales Gambo of the House of Representatives. Director Ringo, go ahead. Hello? Director Ringo? Please proceed with your question. Your mic is on. Hello. Yes, go ahead with your question, Bingo. Yes. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Ma'am Aubrey. Thank so my know. question is about another form of insurance that probably we're missing right now in this pandemic. Unemployment insurance. What are your thoughts about unemployment insurance? Yes, sir. So um, in our paper, we we presented different kinds of social protection at isa nga doon yung ating mga labor market interventions so um, unemployment insurance at iba pang mga mga employment related na, na pwedeng um pagiging program for for our workers and uh, i think it's it's really something that we need to seriously consider for our ang problema nga lang po dito kasi syempre sabi na naman um sa tayo kukuha ng ng, ng pera but then it's really um right now we are in 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 covid um, situation and then even without covid situation we have lots of problems in terms of risks of of na na na, na wawala ng work um or other risks uh, and so i think um it's something that we really need to seriously consider to have unemployment insurance of course the sustainability of these kinds of insurance also is is something that that we will need to look into but yeah i agree with you um my my personal view or my professional view looking at the data is that we have to craft um more um schemes that can help people but then again i will reiterate that these are these are uh, rather um safety nets but we have to you know Punta tayo dun sa isa front door. Uh, ito, ito yung parang back door eh. Punta tayo dun sa mas proactive din. We, we have this, but then we also have those um, those more more um, sustainable way of, of, of helping uh, people, which is improvement of the the, the general um, environment in terms of work so that we can really come up with decent work na, na for our people and i think that that's the, the the most sustainable way but i i certainly um and um personally think that we have to start crafting other uh, other schemes and and when i say craft uh, i i hope that that process would be evidence based um we really need to to think then kung paano siya implement hindi lang yung, yung you know yung medyo natin, yes, but it has to be, I think, grounded on on, on data um, or evidence. Po. So I think that's my, my my opinion on that. Thank you very much, Ao. Okay, let's have another question. And this time it's from uh, Giseline Artuyo. Giseline, your mic is on. You may go ahead with your question, Giseline. Hello? Okay, so let me just read her question, uh, Al. Do you think yes. individuals, he, she asks, uh, do you think individuals who opt to avail private insurance wherein there is higher profit earnings and sometimes offer better coverage or benefit might be a factor why some do not avail of SSS, PhilHealth, and GSIS? If so, would you recommend for better and competitive coverage for this government managed social protection uh, insurance schemes? Yes, uh, certainly. The, the, those who can afford to get their private insurance um, um, from other uh, like banks or from other like Sun Life or kung ano man yung mga, yung mga pwedeng 
kunin. Siyempre, mas talagang mas kaya nila eh. And they um they may think that this is the the better of them and and not um not the the, the SSS and uh, the the other schemes. And so it's it's understandable kasi um in, in our study, we we focus not on that part of the population but more on the vulnerable um vulnerable population but one of your questions is that um certainly i think that our providers our like sss and field health and other um for uh, other official um providers of, of insurance is that um there need also to be they need also to be more how to call this that marketable ba um but then this sss and mga basic kasi sila eh so um it's really meron sigurong ops ma, ma, merong kumbaga eh tal, uh, tawag dito yung if you want these to provide better and maybe yung mga benefits na mabibigay nila ay mas maganda um, mas malaki yung mga mga makukuha ng tao doon syempre mas malaki din yung magiging contribution ng tao. But um doon sa mga maliliit na informal, yung kung ano yung kaya nila. So yung tier, yung tier siguro doon kung kung mas gusto naman ng mga 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 mas well off na mas malaki yung makukuha nila. I I don't know if if SSS is, is trying to work on that na mas malaki din yung yung I think mas malaki naman talaga yung uh, yung contribution mo kung malaki yung sweldo mo, di ba? Sa sa mga sa mga like sa GSIS. I think that's that's this GS, GSIS. I think that's also for, for SSS. So, um, yeah, there's always a room for, for improvement. Uh, baka mas, mas gusto nga nila yung ibang insurance schemes kasi nga ito yung nakikita nila na service ng SSS. And I think um, alam naman ng SSS yun and they are, I think they are constantly improving their their services also. Um, and um, But in this study kasi we want um, people especially the vulnerable ones to to have access to the basic um, coverage basic insurance coverage kung ano yung yung kaya nilang um, contribution or ano yung kaya nilang schemes and so yeah uh, i think sss is 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 hearing whatever um, is being said right now and i'm sure there are they are doing their their, their best also in terms of improving their their mechanisms i've i've heard a while ago um from an official of SSS uh, that they are um, doing um, their best to improve their services. Thank you uh, for that question. Okay. Um, right. Okay, we are just checking if there are still rele relevant questions from our uh, Facebook uh, viewers. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, this one is is from uh, Jerry Judis Prudentia, Ow. and he yes. asks, um, how do we bridge the gap if women are not given the opportunity to be in, to be um, encouraged? If, Okay, how do we bridge the gap if women are not given the opportunity to to be encouraged probably to work or to be part of the labor force? And if if they do, then they are asked to resign because their gender seems to to be a problem in the workplace. Okay, so there, there, there is one question, how do we bridge the gap for them to to enter uh, to be more yeah, economically yes. active there's another yeah, question uh, about to be yeah to be economically to be economically active but then once they are in the labor force there is that a gender issue you know yeah so i i think um discrimination that's discrimination right so it, that's not um that's ought to be yeah i, I can understand na kapag may nangyayaring ganun you have these um, cases um, wherein you 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 lose your job just because you you are a woman you're a woman and then you you pro you're you're probably prejudiced because um, sabi nila ito 
magkakaroon to na um, madaming leaves kasi that that woman is taking care of her family but ano yan eh uh, illegal yan eh so uh, i don't see right now dun sa sa ating um, society i i think that our society is more welcoming uh, in fact I mean, we have many women uh, on top management uh, in in the in the labor uh, force. Uh, so, ano siya? We can understand um, the their ano concern uh, na ganon yung inisip nila. But mali siya, illegal siya, and and um, uh, I don't think that is um, that is a valid issue um, for. For women to have more incentive to work, I think we need to understand their circumstances. So I I, I mentioned I think a few times in my my presentation that there are opportunities um, for women to work uh, online, and that will um, that will help them sort of manage their family work or their their being home based um with their work so kasi dadalhin mo yung work niya pwede na siya mag work online eh so i i've seen so many so many so many things like that um after the covid pandemic like in my community and dami dami ng meron kaming um, facebook group and ang dami dami na talagang uh, nag, nag pumasok sa sa online business and that's really um, promising. No, sana mag, mag continue to even after this. It means that um, baka ito pa yung yung push sa atin para mas maging entrepreneurial you know, for women. And uh, but what you what what you said a while ago is really hindi siya hindi siya ano acceptable in sa atin. That's discrimination. Okay. Thank you very much, Al. And and so for our last question, uh. This is from this is a follow up question actually from Giseline Artuyo. So, sabi niya, there are DOH hospitals which, which initiate the enrollment of indigent patients to feel health. What other specific recommendations can you give to hospitals to increase feel health avail availment of indigents? So, there are hospitals who, um, which initiate the enrollment of indigents, yeah, yeah, to feel um, health. Uh, what I, other I, I, re recommendations, Kaya? As I've said earlier, um, this is this should be a collective effort. Um, mm -hmm. Kapag nandun sila, hindi sila feel health beneficiaries, pwede, pwede namang... And then I, I salute that or I hats off to that host, to those hospitals doing this. Yeah. Kasi para talaga ma-expand natin yung, yung coverage nitong mga, uh, mga, mga programs natin. And, um, and maganda yun, no? kasi doon kasi ma-explain nila eh. May explain nila na kapag ganito po kayo, uh, member po kayo, ganito po yung ang tao pag nakita niya yung deduction dun sa dun sa kanyang ano, dun sa kanyang bill, uh, for, for for mas ano sa kanila mas concrete yun eh na benefit mm -hmm. kaysa yung ah sinasabi sa ti, oh sure sure, kung hindi kasi nangyari sa yo, hindi mo malalaman na ito yung magiging benefit. I I feel that um hospitals, even doctors, even you know, we have to be in this together. They have to That's right. they do the promotion themselves. It's yes. so important. So and have of course, help, we have to help each other. And of course, all the, the active participation, of course, collaboration of the local government. Yes. yes. I, yes. I always, so, uh, many times, no, I mentioned this. Mm -hmm. um, the local mm -hmm. governments, they are the ones um, mm -hmm. on the ground. Malayo na yung kapag kapag national pa yung magagalaw dito yes. and kapag gumawa si national si LGU kunyari ang nangyayari is um, before hindi ko alam ngayon kasi through through bank through ATM ni mga four piece na dati kino, pumupunta pa yung mga four piece beneficiaries dun sa mga ano eh kung ano mang kung anong programa to pumupunta sa mga civil so pag may mga ganong um, opportunities may pista yung mga ganun gaw, gaw, gawan na lahat ng paraan um every time na may, may mga taong nagko-converge um informally or formally o ano mang uh, different uh, venues gamitin na to to inform and educate people raise awareness kasi napaka-importante nitong uh, pagkakaroon natin ng mga information and uh, pagiging aware dun sa mga benefits 
pag si kung wala ka nito o nagkar ng COVID, hindi, hindi ka mga magbibigyan nito or hindi ka mga kapag-avail ng loan or something. Or kahit mag-avail, makakapag-avail ka ng loan, ito mas mas malaki yung nakukuha mo kung ganito yung, yung mga ganun, it's more of, um, ang tao kasi, ano din eh, meron pa ding personal, mas gusto pa rin nila yung may nag explain sa kanila, di ba? Minsan kahit nasa website na, tatawag pa rin yan <laughs> Parang, it's, I, kasi, uh, ano kasi, gusto na customize information. Di kasi ganito po ako eh. So, yun na nakalagay doon. So, if we can also provide more information, yes. kasi, madaming FAQs, mahabang-mahabang FAQs for different kinds of people, ilagay natin lahat na gawin na para, para, para lang ma makuha natin as many people as we can. Thank you very much. Oh, those are very good suggestions. We have uh, we have devoted ample time for our uh, open forum. So, uh, guys, let's please join me in thanking uh, Dr. Tabuga for uh, for her insights, for her uh, very comprehensive presentation, and of course to all of you for sharing your um, comments, your insights, and ideas uh, in, in this webinar. So let's. Let's give them a big virtual clap. And thanks to all of you for your active participation. Thank you, Thank you Thank everyone. You. Okay, so just to wrap up, our discussion today has highlighted uh, many essential uh, points, uh, primarily the gender disparities in the access to social insurance. With uh, We saw that women, assist, women have a disadvantaged position as many of them are not in the labor force. But we also saw other factors that influence access to social insurance, such as participation in the formal labor market, then the role of education, and also working in the agricultural sector. As uh, Dr. Abu, uh, Tabugas pointed out, access to social insurance is, ve is very vital, especially in these uncertain times. And so to expand women's access to social protection, we must give them more opportunities to participate in the labor market. And at the same time, we should put a monetary value to the time they spend at home to perform housework and also acknowledge that housework is still work. Well, actually, these researchers, um, Dr. Michael Abriga and Dr. Connie Dakuikoy, have been advocating for this and they have even conducted um, several studies on this aspect. Also, uh, recent events have, have opened up um, alternative work arrangements like telecommuting or working from home, which which can benefit women. Of course, uh, investing in education is also very important because it is a critical factor in having access to social protection as it increases one's chance to have a stable and high paying job and skilled and educated people have more opportunities to work from to move from farm to uh, non-farm work, which is better so social protection coverage. And then for our uh, agricultural workers, as Dr. Uh, Tabugas mentioned, they must be made aware of existing insurance programs such as agricultural or crop insurance. We should also explore having a law that will guarantee our small farmers access to social insurance. And it's also essential that we boost our efforts to reach out to our informal workers to ensure universal social protection for all. Okay, so with that, I now call on our president, Dr. Celia Reyes, for her final remarks. Mamsel? Yes, um, thank you, um, Sheila. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Autobuga. I think it's very important that we highlight um, these disparities because um, all the global reports would indicate that we're faring quite well. When you go down to the uh, micro level, we see where areas of improvement could still be done. Uh, and we hope that our webinars are able to do that, um, highlight some of the issues, but more importantly, have discussions on what else can be done to um, improve policies and programs. I'd also like to thank the active participation of everyone. I think uh, uh, this just shows that there's a lot of interest in terms of social protection programs, especially given the crisis that we're facing right now. And again, I'd like to thank our webinar team, uh, Sheila, Wang, and Gwen, um, for hosting these weekly webinars. So mm -hmm. aside, I think, from uh, sharing our findings, um, one of my takeaways is that the participants have actually identified also other studies that 
we might pursue. And right. um, just a heads up, um, as Sheila has mentioned, there we also have other studies uh, lined up on social protection, and we hope that you could join our future webinars. Again, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Marcel. Okay, before we end, uh, please allow us to acknowledge the various organizations from government, academe, um, business, civil society, and international development community who join us today. Uh, our sincerest thanks to the Commission on Population and Development, the Department of Agriculture, Department of Budget and Management, Department of Education, uh, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Department of Energy, Department of Health, uh, the Department of Labor and Employment, um, Department uh, Institute for Labor Studies, Department of Science and Technology, Department of Social Welfare and Development, the um, Development Academy of the Philippines, uh, Gender and Development Office, House of Representatives, um, Congressional Planning and Budget Research Department, uh, the Municipality of San Simon, National Anti-Poverty Commission, National Council on Disability Affairs, uh, National Economic and Development Authority, the Office of Senator Joel Villanueva, uh, the uh, Philippine Commission on Women, uh, Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technology Research and Development, the Philippine General Hospital, uh, Forceville Health, um, Philippine Rice Research Institute, Philippine Social Science Council, the Provincial Government of Palawan. Um, okay, the Social Housing Finance Corporation, the Social Security System, and academic institutions such as the Ateneo de Manila, uh, Central Luzon State University, De La Salle University, Don Mario Marcos uh, Memorial State University. Father Saturday in Orius University, Miriam College, Philippine State College of Aeronautics, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, St. Louis University, um, St. Pedro College of Business Administration, Surigao del Sur State University, Tresa Martyrs University, University of uh, Southeastern Philippines, University of the Philippines, uh, and its various campuses, Ahon Sahira. Food and Agriculture Organization, Humanity and Inclusion, Innovations Plus Poverty, Action Philippines, International Institute of Rural Reconstruction, Masaganang Sakahan, Philippine Institute of Environmental Planners, the Philippine Legislators Committee on Population, Save the Children, um, Social Watch, Philippines, and uh, World Renew. Okay. Okay, finally, we have some reminders. Uh, well, you can access the PowerPoint presentation of Dr. Tabuga from the PEDS website. Uh, it's flash on this on your screen, but don't worry if you missed it because we will email you the link. Also, please uh, do not forget to answer the feedback survey that will pop on your screen after this webinar. And if you missed that, we will also email you the link after this event. Uh, your comments and suggestions are important to us to improve our webinars. And lastly, please follow us in our social media pages. We have a website, of course, on Facebook, and also we have a Twitter, Twitter account. So friends, this ends our webinar for this week. Um, Next week on June 18, uh, next week on June 25, I mean, we will talk about another interesting issue, which is the uh, supply of and demand for data science and analytics workforce in the Philippines. So hope you can join us again next week. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Maraming salamat po.